Okay. So good evening. It's after seven o'clock, um, and we will begin the Wellfleet Select Board meeting of Tuesday, May 28th, 2019. Uh, we will begin with announcements, open session, and public comments, and public comments must be brief. The board will not deliberate or vote on any matter raised solely during announcements and public comments. Um, are there any comments or announcements? It's okay. F from the board? Yes. Um, both Sharon Agger, who served for quite some time on the housing partnership, and Jim O'Connell, who served for years and years and years on the Shellfish Advisory Committee, uh, have handed in their resignations, and it's time to thank them very much for their long service to the town. You want to proclaim a thank you? Okay. Yeah. Thank you to Sharon Agger and Jim O'Connell for their long service to the two different committees. They've been both very instrumental in keeping us going. Then a second announcement. Okay. So uh, the shall we say the bicycle related project uh, and, and related to the intersection at Main Street that is being carried forth in ways that are somewhat related or not related at all or very related depending on your point of view um, is proceeding. And the DCR, which is the bike path section of this uh, proposed uh, improvement, set of improvements, um, has a comment period that will be over uh, in the evening on June 10th. In other words, these comments have to be submitted by June 11th. And the person at MEPA, the Massachusetts Environmental Protection Agency that you submit these comments to, is called Nate Jones and more can be found on the MEPA website. So if you have any comments about this, feel free to make, you know, send, send in, yeah, okay. And, and could we put that link or address or email up on our website? Thank you. Yes. Um, Kathleen? Um, I have just one comment, Madam Chair. On uh, Friday, uh, June the 14th at 8.30 a.m., Outer Cape is going to cut the ribbon on their new facility. Um, so I'm hoping that they'll get a large turnout um, of local residents to say um, good luck. Um, thank you for sticking it out in Wellfleet and uh, take a chance to see the new facility. It's gonna be awesome. So that's at 8.30 a.m. Friday morning, June the 13th, uh, 14th rather. Anyone else? Can I just make um, a yes. quick comment? Um, Helen wouldn't say this because she was on the committee, but I think we owe a, a, a thank you to the Charter Review Committee um, who has officially disbanded because they weren't renewed oh, for all of the work that they did on, on updating our charter. So I, I don't have everybody's name in front of me, but I would like to say that we should thank all of them. So Yes, thank you. I think it was Denny O'Connell, Helen, Harry Turkanian, uh, Barbara. Barbara. Barbara Carey. Um, Deborah Freeman. Uh, Thank you for taking over. Yep. Uh, That's five of you. Oh, and Paul Cullity, who Paul was Cullity. there for most of it. Yep. Is that Good. it? Good. Okay. So, and, and Roger Putnam, Putnam yeah. who was on for the second time. He had been on the previous uh, Charter Review Committee. So that's hard work. So, okay. One quick announcement. Mm -hmm. um, on Wednesday, I believe at the Flying Fish, there's the uh, fundraiser, probably people know, for Paul Souza, the longtime, I think, 10 year manager at the marketplace, who's had been ba uh, battling health cha challenges and uh, medical bills. So, they'll be, the Flying Fish is supplying uh, pizza, there'll be a cash bar, and uh, Hopefully, we'll all turn out to support him. It's at 6 p.m. At yep. 6 p.m. And that's tomorrow, Wednesday tomorrow. Yeah, good. Uh, so one announcement is that we're taking a couple of things out of order tonight on the agenda. It shouldn't affect anyone. So after public hearings, um, which is uh, 
pertaining to shellfish policy and longitude and latitude coordinates. We will uh, have the Mass Shellfish Officers Association presentation of Deputy Constables of the Year. So we'll move that up so the gentleman from Martha's Vineyard can catch the ferry tonight. Um, and then also, because we may have, uh, we have a lot of discussion possibly under business, we, we decided this at our meeting on Thursday that we would take the appointments and reappointments for the Energy Committee and the Recycling Committee and the use of town property. We would put, again, separately with the appointments, but we would not discuss the appointments. We would just move to pass them, and same with the use of town property, unless somebody has an issue with that or unless somebody on the board has an issue with one of the um, uh, businesses or one of the occasions for town property okay got that okay thank you so any announcements from the audience okay yes um I think I'm on. okay just want to take this chance to introduce one of our two newest employees special officer Kyle Robbins is here with us today he'll be here with for the first time this summer at a later meeting I'll bring the other gentleman who's also gonna be new with us for us but I just want to have a chance to present him to the board if anybody has any questions for the young officer. Great, Welcome. thank you. Hi, Kyle. Put him back to work now. Yep. <laughs> uh, also, the annual Special Olympics Law Enforcement Torch Run will be tomorrow. The torch starts at Provincetown at 5 o'clock in the morning. We'll run at approximately 66 miles all the way to Bourne. We expect the torch to make it to Wellfleet at about 7 o'clock in the morning, and we'll run up the whole way through Wellfleet it on to East Ham. Um, I want the board to remember July 4th parade's coming up. You don't have to make a decision today, but if you are looking to use one of the unmarked police cars, let me know so we can have it ready for you and things like that like we have it in the past. Okay. Um, a quick summary, Memorial Day weekend was busy for us. We were out with the many different activities going on. Um, we were happy to report there were no major incidents over the long weekend from Thursday, I think it starts even earlier, right through Monday. Um, Four motor vehicle accidents without any serious injuries, two along Route 6, one vehicle drove off of Ocean View Drive, and we had one down on Bank Street. Um, we had three individuals taken into custody for being intoxicated. They didn't need medical attention. We have a chance for them to sober up or someone to come collect them. Um, we had a warrant arrest that had to be brought to the House of Correction. Criminal charges for OUI. We have a uh, negligent operation motor vehicle operating on license. We uh, kicked off our Outer Cape Traffic Enforcement we had over 90 stops over the weekend. We were very active, trying to make sure we people know we're there, trying to operate under the influence and all the different things. If we count the other towns, we had over 100 stops between New Orleans, I mean, East Ham and Provincetown. So it was a busy weekend, but it was a well weekend. So just want to give a quick update. Well, thank, thank you, you Chief. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nancy Chivetta, the Shellfish Constable. I wanted to make an announcement that as of today, Burton Baker Beach, which is the southernmost beach of the um, Indian Neck area, um, south of, of the breakwater area, is closed to fishing, uh, to shell fishing, because we participated in the what's called the um, Contaminated Quahog Relay. It's a state-sponsored program. We get um, a variety of sizes of clams um, that are lightly contaminated from the Taunton River. Uh, the state does stringent testing. They have no diseases, and since uh, cohogs are filter feeders, they will be um, cleansing themselves, purifying themselves over the course of the next few weeks. Uh, but the state asks that we leave them there for three months so that they can spawn and add new genetics to our harbor and um, create <coughs> sustainable cohog beds moving into the future. So we hope uh, the state will come in and test again in August, and uh, we will be allowed to open on September 16th if um, everything goes according to plan. Uh, but for the summer, that, um, that first Indian Neck Beach that you come to when you come down Cove Road and go to the right, it's on the left there. There's a lot of signage out, and we're putting it on Facebook, and we've put it in our shellfish criers. Um, that that will be closed, and we have Andrew on board uh, doing the monitoring and the supervising of that to make sure that uh, we don't have people inadvertently um, shellfishing right. there. Good. And we'll also do it in Chipman's Cove as well. Thank you. Uh, Justina? 
Um, yeah, see, I'm a little confused. When you say it's close to shellfishing, all shellfishing, commercial, personal? That area is only for recreational shellfishing. It's a recreational. Year round, but it's Got close it. to all shellfishing, meaning you can't mm -hmm. oyster there. You can't pick up any other shellfish there at all. In that recreational? It, just in the, in the southernmost point, um, basically almost between the two little breakwaters there. But there's a rock to the, to the north going towards the jetty, and it's from there south. And there's buoys out. They're well marked. And uh, we'll be there educating people. We've already begun our education on site as well as uh, written. Um, Thank you, Nancy. I, oh, sorry. Yep, go ahead. I was just wondering how well it's posted that it's... Uh, There's uh, about four signs there now, plus okay. signs at each of the other entries to Indian Neck. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. Uh, Indian Neck, uh, yep, Ms. Uh, Vivanti. Hi, I'm Lydia Vivanti. I'm with the Wellplate Recycling Committee. Just a couple of recycling or transfer station items. One is uh, June 1st, there's the household hazardous waste collection at the transfer station, and that's gonna be June 1st from 9 a.m. to noon. Maybe that announcement was made at previous meetings, I'm not sure. So. And also we have um, the Wealthy Community Forum um, coming up on June 3rd. It's uh, what's going on with recycling, that's the title of that. And that's gonna be at 7 <coughs> p.m. here at the Senior Center. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements from the audience? Okay, we will move on to public hearings. And the first one is uh, with shell fishing policy, approval of a new GPS point number five, et cetera. I will let our shellfish constable explain both A and B. I think I can even just do this right from here. I, yeah. um, so as we looked at our map, for the uh, shell fishing points that are included in our regulations, we noticed that one of the points was wrong. So it was actually the delineation of the end of the recreational shell fishing only area at Burton Baker Beach. And on the map, it's at, um, let's just say if you're at the beach looking towards Great Island, it was at the end of the right hand little breakwater. And instead it should be at the left hand. So. Uh, we got the GPS coordinates, and we'd like to update the regulations. When we brought this to Shellfish Advisory, the second item on the agenda, um, they said, you know, these, are, these coordinates are outdated because they're done in degrees, and now everything is decimals in how you, uh, I guess, translate GPS. So they said, why don't we just get all of our uh, points in our shellfishing regulations put into decimals? So that's really kind of a housekeeping item. Yeah, good idea. Any questions from the board, from the audience? And I'm gonna check, but you just, you just did both of them, yes. Okay, great, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying on top of everything. You do need to vote, though, to yes. change it. We do, okay. Yes, yep, you need, both oh, of those I'm need a vote at my, to change them. Okay. I move, motion. I move to approve new GPS point number five to correct inaccuracy in the current shell fishing policy and regulations, appendices, appendices B and C. Second. All in favor? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, and now we will have the Mass Shellfish Officers Association presentation of Deputy Constables of the Year Award. I'm sorry, before you move no. to that, we've got to do B as well. I thought we did both of them together. That's why I just asked. Just she presented a. both of them, but we didn't do a motion for oh, B. Oh, okay. Sorry, I've got to get oh, on. I've yes. been talking too uh, much. Okay. okay. I move to approve. May I? Yes, yeah. you may. I move to approve updating Appendix B, latitude and longitude coordinates from degrees, which are obsolete, to today's standard of decimals. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Sorry about that. Too many new papers here. Okay, now, now we will uh, congratulate and present our Deputy Constables of the Year, Assistant Constable for Propagation, Johnny Mankovich, and Deputy Constable Chris Manulo, hiding in the back there. If you would like to come up to, eh, you can, yeah, come up to the tables. You get the, these nice um, letters. 
No, come and no. use the microphone because we're okay. taping it. So you, you know, this one up here, you could um, use too because it, you'll be seen that way. Okay. Yeah, come up here. Hi, okay. I'm uh, Paul Bagnell. Mm -hmm. I am the shellfish constable for the town of Eggertown. And uh, to explain to you uh, what the Mass Shellfish Officers Association is all about is we are a bona fide 501c3. We hold quarterly meetings to uh, provide updates uh, from the Division of Marine Fisheries, as well as scientific presentations, as well as uh, every other year or every third year we operate a course out at Mass Maritime uh, so that everybody is basically on the same page when uh, they become a shellfish constable. Uh, due to Chapter 130, Section 98, you uh, should complete this course upon being hired. Uh, most, most towns do follow that uh, protocol, and we just finished a, a, a nice class last March in, uh, with 30 participants. Um, so why did I get on the boat at 2.30 and come here and give a presentation? Because the people from Wellfleet are interested in coming into our meetings. They are anywhere from New Bedford to Plymouth to Danvers, as you can imagine. 57 coastal communities from Rockport to Westport. Um, I would like to thank the town of Wellfleet for the support over the past. I've been the uh, uh, president for over uh, 10 years and uh, know a lot of the, the town. So uh, while I fumble and, and get these out, I'm gonna call up Chrissy to say a few words. She is your area biologist from the Division of Marine Fisheries. Mm -hmm. And apologies uh, from my able-bodied assistant, Amy, who actually got the plaques, but is too sick to be here tonight. So she just tossed them in my window on the way by 30 on 28, because she lives in Falmouth. So uh, this is Chrissy. I won't butcher your last name. You can say it. Sure. And, uh, so as Paul said, I'm your area biologist for the state. And I just want to thank Johnny and Chris, and also Nancy, because I hope you all understand what a tremendous service your constables and your deputy constables do for your town. Because without their help, the state couldn't have all the open shellfish growing areas that we do have. Between depending on them to be the eyes and ears on the ground, because we don't, you know, we're in New Bedford or we're in Gloucester, and you know, we depend on these constables to be running everything in the towns, basically. We depend on them to come pick us up and give us a boat ride, um, especially on the vineyard. You know, we're taking a ferry over and depending on you know, the vineyard guys to come pick us up. We're coming over, you know, it's always taking me on the boat. Again, um, you would not have the open shellfish beds we have if it weren't for their efforts. So I just want to thank them and you know, hope you all understand the tremendous service that we're getting from them. I would just like to close and uh, we both gave them a plaque for their mantle or where they feel appropriate to put it and uh, thank them for all the support because you certainly don't do this job for the love of money, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> um, and uh, they've been dedicated and Wellfleet has been well attended at, at our meetings. So thank you for taking the time. I know you're very busy, so I'm gonna sit down and shut up now if, unless any of the board has uh, questions. Uh, Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. This, is, this has been put together by the town. These are all the letters of love, approval, and uh, from the people in town that, that wrote letters to get you nominated and get you. I can't, and so, I can't believe this. So yeah. they're really good letters. <laughs> I was reading them before. I go, oh my goodness. So um, <laughs> yes, thank you. This, thank you. this is all your appreciation, and uh, we hope you know that you certainly have our support. Do you want them to hold up their pen? Yeah. 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 Stand in. Yes. Sneak in the middle. There we go. Okay. Say shellfish. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well deserved. Thank you all so much.
Um, I think I can speak for Chris on this, is that um, it has been our pleasure to be employed by um, the town of Wellfleet for such a long time. Um, we love our jobs, we love our support. Um, from right down from the fishermen that we'll be police and work with, right to town hall administration, we've both always feel it, felt very well treated here. And thank you for having us. <laughs> You're welcome. Welcome. Kind, John. I think I could speak for John too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we like to thank all of the past constables that have uh, supported us. Uh, for me, it started with uh, acting constable James McGrath, Bill Walton, act, uh, Andy Koch, acting constable Johnny, and uh, uh, our current uh, constable Nancy Chavetta. Um, it has been an honor and a pleasure. It's, it's a very rare job. It's a beautiful job. It's very fulfilling. Um, and yeah, so grateful, so grateful. So we're number one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so now moving on to appointments or reappointments, we'll start with our special police officers, Chief Fassett. We have uh, three different categories to quickly appoint. Um, I can go through them real quick for you to help speed them along. The special officers for July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020 will be Scott Higgins, Mark Spiegel, Desmond Keogh, and John Zooks. On the National Park, they get also appointed with us. They work cooperatively with us for many years. And those people will be Leslie Reynolds, Christopher Hartgrove, Christopher Anderson, W. Russell Hughes, Eric Trudeau, Megan Farrell, Seth G. I always get that wrong. Thank you. <laughs> Chrissy Presley and Ryan Wright. The last group of individuals are full-time officers who are due for their no annual appointment from July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020, will be uh, Officer Les Lacio de Oliveira, Mark Braun, Nicholas Daly, Ed Garneau, Jeremy Valley, and Robert Pimentel. Thank you. May um, I have a motion that encapsulates all three of those um, sections? Yeah, I can do that for you. Um, do, do you want their names read? Or? No, okay. no, I think just. Yeah, just the reappointments. I move to approve the appointments of the full-time police officers. I move to approve the appointments, reappointments of the special police officers. And I move to approve the reappointment of special police officers, Scott Higgins, Mark Spiegel, Desmond Keough, and John Zooks. Is second. there a second? All in favor? Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, and now, uh, if I can interrupt for one yes, second, you may. Chief, there's one on the bottom here. Kakunas. For a community sever. Oh, oh, oh yes, gosh. We, yeah. That was actually done by you as the parking administrator. The board can weigh in if they wish, but that is something that's done through as the parking. Oh, yeah, I remember it now. Exactly. So, <laughs> so that's, we're welcome aboard. She was doing it last me. year. Everybody loved her. She's yeah. back again this year. Okay. So she's a great addition to our department. So I don't want to leave Evangeline out. Okay. So that was on here by mistake, just. Yes, I, I put them all together as one big Got package. It. But we don't do it. Yep. And doesn't, okay. And now moving on to um, appointment for the Energy and Climate Action Committee and the Recycling Committee. Um, this is for the appointment of Suzanne Ryan Ishkanian to the Energy and Climate Action Committee and Christine Wisnowski, Wisniewski to the Recycling Committee. Is Christine here too? No. There you are. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so may I have a motion to, and I'm sorry we're rushing this, but last meeting we went till 11.30, 11.15, so. Uh, may I have a motion to? I move to that? appoint, oh, yeah. go ahead. I move to appoint Suzanne Ryan Ishkanian to the Energy and Climate Action Committee for a three-year term. Second. And do you want to do them both together, please? Yeah, OK. Uh, and I also move to appoint Christine Wisniewski to the Recycling Committee. Second. 
Uh, the, sorry, for a term to expire on June 30th, 2020. But forgive me, I knew there was an issue. Let's do the first one because there's an issue with this one. So let's right, just do okay. the first one. All right, go ahead. What's uh, any so comment the first from one the board? was seconded. Yes. So okay. a vote. Yeah. Oh, you want to do the first one? You don't want to discuss it? Because I want to discuss the second the one. The second one. All right. Yeah. Wasn't yeah, clear. Sorry. Okay. All in favor of Suzanne? Thank yeah. you. Okay. The reason um, I have a question about Christine Wisniewski is not because you've so kindly applied, but there are those are three-year terms, so why does it say here that your term is going to expire on 2020? Are you filling in for somebody? In other words, did somebody leave and you're filling out the term? Um, this is an alternate's position, and oh. Charles Thibodeau did leave as an alternate. I don't know if that's why this is on. Probably. Okay, so it's probably yeah. because of that. Forgive me. Otherwise, it would have been 2022. So I move to appoint Christine Wisniewski to the Recycling Committee for a term to expire on June 30th, 2020. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Okay, thank you. So now as um, we are taking things out of order, we will have... Um, I want to make sure we're not having clear. Use the town property. Uh, yes. Okay. So again, with use of town property, all the selectmen can look at their agenda. We would like to move these all at once unless there's comments. I have one if comment. If you're prepared. Okay. Please. Um, I don't know if you want to take spat out of order, but I had a couple of questions on that. Um, and then nothing, no other questions. Okay. And I have and a question. And item B we are pulling because the gentleman was not able to be here. So Which one? Item, item B. 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 We'll postpone that to a okay. bridge. He's out of the country. And I have questions for E. And I have questions. <laughs> so much for this. Okay. I have a question for A. Uh, all right. So, again, just um, that's fine. Um, I have a couple comments, but... Um, we'll start with A, uh, Indian Neck Beach. Is Daniel Burns here? Okay, so. Um, we have a letter from him. Yep, did you get the letter? It's in the new yes. packet. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, that we have there was shortly. either a typo or something strange on the application form. It says, fees will be charged by the applicant. Now, yeah. for a wedding ceremony, it strikes me that there will be no fees charged for a wedding ceremony. So maybe what the applicant meant to say was fees will be paid by the applicant or charged to the applicant. But does anybody think it's a typo besides me? Um, yes, it's a typo. Yeah, I mean, who charges to come to, come to a wedding? To, well, actually, we, have, we do have a new policy on, on, on charging more than just the... Um, uh, processing fee. No, but what this says is so it actually that the says, applicant yeah. is going to charge for coming yeah, to the way. Yeah, I know. So, so I, you know, I think so it's So how okay. do you want to handle it? Do you want Just to approve it? Just say fine, but yeah. that's inaccurate. All right, so do you want to make a motion no. for that one? I move to approve the use of Indian Neck Beach by Daniel Burns on September 7, 2019 from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. subject to the conditions, if any, as listed on the application form for a fee of $110. Second. All in favor? Sorry, any comments from the audience? Okay. All right. Um, and then the next one is uh, for Baker Field with Neil Nichols, and that's being postponed. Um, SPAT is up, various locations and times with SPAT. Kathleen, did you have a discussion of that? No, that you? I'm that just was Christina. Um, which, which are the various locations and times? They're in the motion. Oh, there's They're Michelle. in the motion. Sorry. And on the application? I don't know. Mail Beach, Town Pier, I Indian I Neck. Yeah. There really are two primary locations, just like last year, Mayo Excuse Beach. Me, but would you please introduce yourself? Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Inslee from Wellfleet Spat. 
And okay. Uh, last year we held, or the last two years, we held the shellfish farm tours, and we'll, we're requesting the use of primarily two locations, Mayo Beach and Indian Neck. And we're really just reserving Indian Neck for, I don't know, a contingency plan if mm -hmm. we had to change. But we've decided we'll hold them primarily at Mayo Beach because the parking's there. And uh, Jacob Puffer, who is also one of our board members, it's will be the right hosting there. the tours. And his site is ideal to promote um, grow out methods, oysters, and clam culture. So it's just we can do a, a wider interpretation from that site. Right. And I think I asked you last year, are you charging uh, a fee or did you decide not to do that? for the We did. It's $10 a person with children 12 and under for and free. How do you feel that's going? I feel like it's going well. Uh-huh. So you don't feel it's... Because it, I know I pushed you hard on it. You don't feel it keeps the particip participation that you want. Well, we try to limit the number to 25 so mm -hmm. that... You know, it's a reasonable group that you can really interact with them and give them the information that we want. It's an educational program. So I feel in that regard, we don't want it to be too pricey because right. we want it to be accessible for all. And uh, yeah, so by that, you know, with that rationale, I feel like it's going fine. And are there costs for you or there, do you have to pay staff or? Yes, we pay a, a naturalist, mm -hmm. you know, and like an intern and we pay them a, a flat fee, our permits. Yeah. And is it a profitable program? We're making a little bit of money, but you know, some some are sold out, some aren't. Uh, at this point, I'm a little delayed in getting the application in. Oh, we also have a, a rack card that we do, so that's you know, right. a couple hundred dollars to do that and put that around. So might be that the first two, I'm not sure if they'll they'll run because of the late time frame. Only really on my part. So but ballpark, would you say it made? thousand dollars a summer five one well um you know I, i'm sorry i i don't feel i think i would just be giving you a guesstimate right now i could i could get that information to you but i don't sure and i can't remember have we done the permitting for us yet i'm sorry say that again yes we have we have okay the the the, where I'm going with this, and I'll, I'll talk to you more privately, is in an era when we're trying to get away from just property taxes and um, when town property is being used, sometimes quite profitably, sort of just taking a look. Oh, okay. Well, this isn't really a profit-focused no, you know, it, program. Right. The idea is I'm keeping it really reasonable because our, our, the, our main goal is to deliver the information and... Mm -hmm you know, teach people all that's involved with shellfishing. Of course. And, and including, you know, the history of Wellfleet as the, you know, the location for our sure. successful industry. So it's more for me, more about the educational process. Right. No, I understand that. I re as I recall, you originally wanted to uh, provide it as a public service. My comments were more mm -hmm. towards Oyster Fest, but I wanted to give you the general framework of where I'm coming from. I see. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Uh, yes, Kathleen. Um, I'm going to go in a different direction, um, and it's, I do support this, um, but our parking task force chair is in the audience tonight, and I'm going to ask a, a little bit about how many cars do you expect to park at Mayo Beach? Um, this is a, a lot of times. It is, but and a lot of people come in family groups, so I think we usually have six, seven cars, something like that. People don't generally come alone. Or some people, we found that a lot of the attendees are even locals who have are full-time residents or part-time or even visiting. And, and are they walking in? And they walk in and they're just very intrigued and they really want to know more. Um, well, I, I'd ask that this summer you try and track your parking. Sure. Um, so that we can add that to an equation going down the line here. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll just point out that these are, there's only uh, one, two, three, four on a Saturday or Sunday, and the other days are really off hours um, in a way from June to August. And I know I've heard people say really great things about being informed about the shellfish industry. So, all right, may I have a motion? No, Jim. Oh, you have something? Okay. 
Um, so at the bottom of the page here, it says subject conditions, if any, is listed on an application form for a fee of $20 per event. Does that mean, through you to Michelle, does that mean each one of these 12 events, you're going to be, what's the $20 per event? I'm looking at the sheet the application. here. There are 12 events listed with the locations, the dates rather, and times. And then at the bottom it says, for a fee of $20 per event. Is that a typo from last year? This is $20 per day, right? Uh, that's what Jean Matt gave me was $20 per event on the back of Michelle's application here. Oh, yeah. See, I, don't, I don't have that. I, I'm sorry I didn't go to the meeting packet to see the notes. I should have done that. So perhaps it's just, did you charge $20 last year? No, that's what the town's charging yeah. per for event. Okay, so it's going to be the town's going to get $140 for yes. this. Okay, and more. thank you. I needed to clarify it. It wasn't totally clear to me because I'm maybe slow-witted. And um, the other thing I want to say is it's a great good thing to educate people in any way possible about the shellfishing industry. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I agree. Um, Mr. O'Connell. If I, <coughs> Denny O'Connell with the Parking Task Force. If I might just note for you, uh, Kathleen, this is probably a low tide event uh, when there isn't much parking going on at that location. A light bulb. <laughs> okay. Uh, may I have a motion, please? I move to approve the use of Mayo Beach Aquaculture Lease Area with Indian Neck Aquaculture Lease Area as a secondary location and the Mayo Beach Town Pier and Indian Neck Public Parking Areas on the following dates and times as printed in um, our packet. Is there a second? Subject to the, sorry, subject to the conditions, if any, is listed on the application form for a fee of $20 per event. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now moving on to Kathleen Marucci, Mayo Beach. There. Hi, I'm Kathleen Marucci, and I am asking to get married on Mayo Beach on June 29th between 2.30 and 3.30. Great. Oh. Okay, any uh, questions or comments from the board? Um, how many, yes? There's 75 people attending, no chairs, arch with flowers, two-person band, cars will park at pier since reception is at Holden Inn. I could have sworn the Holden Inn said they never had weddings in the summer. <laughs> no, they do. I know they do, yeah. <laughs> just, so. just commenting. Um, yes, any comments from the board, questions? No. So this is June 29th on a Saturday from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. There are going to be about 75 people. It sounds nice. And you're all going to be parking on the pier given that... Well, most of the people are staying at the inn, so they'll be parking at the inn. Oh, and cool. Then, okay. Yeah. I know what I wanted to ask you. Do you know what the tide is? It is low tide. So have you been to the harbor at low tide? Yeah. Have you taken a... Sometimes it's quite odiferous, odiferous, oh, odorous. My mother is not happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really, I really, I guess it's kind of too late, but um, you might want it like at a, at a higher tide, medium to high tide, but that's just my opinion. But seriously. I don't really have a choice. <laughs> well, yeah. you do, you're the bride. I know, My goodness. But, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, all right, I get it, okay. Uh, may I have a motion? I move to approve oh, the use. Oops, Ms. Javetta. Just yep. uh, something Sorry, that Nancy. I wrote on, I'm Nancy, the shellfish constable. Something that I wrote on your application is that uh, shellfishmen access their grants on Mayo yeah. Beach. Uh, so look for the tire tracks okay. or have somebody that day try and contact our department, 349-0325, okay. um, just to make sure you're not you're setting up not where there's going to be people away. driving. Yeah, because yep. yeah, they're allowed to do sense. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and they don't stop for you. Okay. Yeah, and um, sorry, Madam Chair. Yeah. There also is a condition from the harbor master. Make other arrangements for parking. Pier at this time will be very busy. Mayo Beach would be a good option. Yeah, so 
most likely, my whole family is probably just going to go in one car because we have a house in Wallfleet. So if we have to, we can just park at my house and then kind of shuttle people over. There's not going to be that many people to shuttle over because most of them are staying at the inn. Okay. I'm sure. Yes. The Mayo Beach parking lot will be, uh, you can have people park there too. Yeah. Like right well, yeah, that's kind of like, fine. I, I kind of, that's yeah. kind of what I was thinking was yeah. that. It's fine. I called it the pier. No, yeah. you're good. <laughs> Yeah, I think especially without being dredged, there won't be that many boaters and things like that. So I think you're good. Um, okay, may I, any other comments from the audience? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I move to approve the use of Mayo Beach by Kathleen Marucci. Marucci. Marucci on June 29th, 2019 from 2 from 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. subject to the conditions, if any, is listed on the application fee and for a fee of $110. Second. All, all in favor? Thank you. Thank good you. luck. <laughs> Have a good day. We'll all come. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and now we have Eric Gustafsson, where is Eric? Uh, for fund seekers using various locations. Hello. Oh, go ahead. Um, come up here so the camera can see, see you. Maybe either there at that, that mic, thank you. So again, we're um, actually we're moving right along, but any um, questions or comments yeah. on his application? Yes, Kathleen. Um, hi, Eric. We've met before. Uh, I know Suzanne's made a note that um, before sticker requirements, you can use Gull Pond, um, but she also has noted here that you can also use it before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m. in season. Um, I'd like to take that out of this um, simply because uh, the Gull Packa Association is really adamant that there be no paddle boarding out there at any time during the season. Um, it doesn't make any difference to me that it's before 9 a.m. or after 5 p.m. The people that are out there don't want it at all. You're welcome to do it before the stickers are required. Meaning people can't do it for fun also? I mean, they don't want, we're not doing a profit for business out there um, during. For business, but people can do it for fun still. Many homeowners have the paddle boards right in their backyard out on the pond, yes. So I would just, I don't, I know what Gopaka is, but I wanted to question what, um, I guess I'll use the word authority, do they have to determine um, that? They don't have an authority, but they've um, met with Suzanne and there's been, um, Helen can speak more Well, to Suzanne it. on the back says that it's okay. So. It's kind of stretching it. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, this is what we go by. Uh, what were you gonna say, Helen? So there are two issues here. Uh, one is this is a um, is this a surf school kind of thing? Not surf school, but this is lessons. It's lessons. Part of my yes, it's Stop lessons. Now uh, I'm qualifying this. I go to the Gupaka meetings whenever I'm on the Slack board, um, and the issue is people using paddle boards recreationally. And it wasn't that they were out on the pond having a good time. It's that, frankly, they go anywhere, which isn't, it's a great pond. There's public access. But a lot of times they go across to the sluice or they access beaches on private property. And then uh, things aren't always going as well as they might. And uh, the sluice can, frankly, start to smell bad. I, these are some of the issues that got brought up, and the extent of this, it's, it's a lot. This is different. This is not people just renting paddle boards. This is lessons, and when the lesson is done, they don't get to take the paddle board and use it recreationally, do they? Correct. Yeah, so to my mind, it's different. And I'm qualifying this, but this is my memory because it comes up every year. What's your memory? Well, through you, Madam Chair, to Helen, I believe that we um, banned for-profit business out on Gull Pond. Um, we're no longer um, renting any kind of equipment on Gull Pond. Right. Um, I.e., nor are we allowing for-profit lessons to be on that particular pond. He has been aware of that. He has every other pond 
there, and Suzanne has allowed him in the past to use Gull Pond before our stickers are required, which is June 30th. Now been expanded to say, well, he can use it during the season before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m. Um, I think that's going to raise a flag of concern to the residents that are out there when we've already banned for-profit from operating out there. So I would, I would just like to say, I'm going to let Mike go too, is that Suzanne usually knows very well what's going on and um, how many people have been used. I know that last year we did put a ban on. I don't know if it was uh, uh, to carry over year to year, but she has signed off on this. And it, to what Helen is saying is if they're having lessons, we could just ask that you don't go into the sluice way to, into the Higgins Pond. He does go through the sluice way. Okay, with lessons. Okay, just. Well, I do sometimes. Okay, well, if but that's. The main reason this all came about was because people without permits were showing up, um, Provincetown people, dropping 20 boards off. Yeah. And, um, yes. You replaced the nice woman that used to sit here. I'm for, I've forgotten her name. Or No, I'm sorry. No, the gentleman. Nice man. Is, yeah. His wife is oh, trying yeah. to control this whole thing at Gull Pond, and she couldn't do that. And so they just said, well, let's just cut everybody out. Well, yeah. I was getting a permit there for, you know, 10 years. Well, and I think that, I'm just going to interrupt you. I think that the um, ban was on the rental of boards at Gull Pond, which is what you were saying, is that, the, that there were the renters mm -hmm. dropping off and boards and other equipment rather than having a class where after the class they take their boards with them or they take them back to the rental shop. They're just not leaving them there. But Janet, excuse me, in the select board's policy, the language is all for profit business. In, in Gull Pond? Yes. That's the language in the policy. Hmm. Um, what were you going to say, Mike? Oh, I, I wasn't aware that of the policy that it was all for profit business. And I, I was just wondering if it carries over. Yeah. It's that permanent policy to not allow. Because gr growing up, there was always Jack's boat rental there. Yeah. And it didn't yeah. seem to be a problem. I mean, a lot of kids had fun. People were on paddle boats, kayaks, canoes. Yeah. And I don't really understand the difference why we were like well, segregating so stand-up paddle boarders or people who want to learn how to stand up paddle board from all these other people. And I'm not so sure why a public pond like this is sort of being controlled by an association of people who are a butters or live it, around yeah, it. Yeah. So, so, Madam Chair, no, for you to Mike, so it's, just wait, it's no, also the no, Conservation I have a Commission. Yeah. So I think it's yeah. unusual that Suzanne would sign off on this because she knows this better than anyone. So um, can you look up the public policy quickly or the P Board of Selectmen's policy quickly and read that to us? Um, and if not, let me see, I'm just reading activity surfing, kite surfing. This is, this is also for the bay and for the um, ocean beaches. Are you going to use the ocean beaches this year? Um, yes, for, just for surf. <coughs> now, are you going to use any other ponds besides Gulf Pond? Well, granted me um, Great Pond because yeah. they took away Gull, but it's pretty, I didn't use it once because there's no beach, you can't yeah, carry the boards down without getting in people's way. Yeah. Well, okay. It's nice, but it's tough to get to. Like, oh. if I have a couple, I'll take them, maybe, but any more than two boards is just... I'm not you, them. I'm doing this too much. They're talking back and forth, and I can't hear you because they're talking between. Sorry, Janet. Do you have that yet, Courtney? Uh, not yet. Okay. So who had their hand up first? Me. Okay. Uh, through you to Mike, what changed was intensity of use big time. It changed a lot. So that's the short answer. It really changed. But I'm with the chair on this. In other words, Suzanne has vetted it. She said, has said exactly how you can use it if you want. These people who were using paddle boards or whatever they're standing on are not going to be without supervision. So whoever's with them is not going to let them, you know, get off and use a beach as a latrine, frankly. Right, and also wash their boards. 
right? Rinse, if they're going from salt water into yeah. the pond, they rinse yeah. them, right? So there's he, supervision. He knows all this stuff. And my other question about this was, why is there no mention of insurance here? Don't we routinely say to people who want to use town property and this kind of thing, isn't there usually insurance? Always. Yeah. So why is that not mentioned in here? On my part or? No, on, okay. you know. I always, we, as soon as I get my, I just got the um, re-upping on it and um, I'd send it in when I get it. Through you to the town administrator um, about this? So this, so I'm going to say this is a clerical error because we do we usually do get that. What was Justina going to say? Oh. She had her hand well, when up. we say for profit, it makes it sound like a dirty word, but um, you know, there's a variety of activities in the summer that um, make Wall Fleet fun, and certainly this gentleman's been doing wonderful lessons for a long time, and uh, Spat will be doing nonprofit things. I don't think we can pick and choose and say summer. Um, you know, the, yeah. yeah, and then in terms of the uh, owner association of the pond, you you know, you when you buy a house on a pond, you don't um, also buy the right to keep everybody else from using it. So I would be very, very, very against uh, having to restrict, restrict this fine gentleman's um, fun business. So what I... If I could add that, I mean, you're, you're considering the seashore and the Audubon nonprofits, but they're collecting money to take yeah. people. But yeah. they're also doing a nice service and educating them. We're out there picking up garbage every time we're out there. I'm teaching them about nature. It's not just let's paddle and make a lot of noise and getting people yeah. away. So what I would like to suggest is it sounds like most of us are in favor of granting this uh, permit and we could um, have a contingent upon uh, the beach director, Suzanne Grout Thomas, clarifying that she okays Gulf Pond. But I mean, it says right here, Suzanne would like, to, per Suzanne, would like to use Gulf Pond before and after sticker requirements. So, um, and also before 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So Suzanne is signing off on this. Um, so. Um, I'd either like a motion or a motion with Madam a contingent. Chair, hmm? And with proof of insurance. Yeah. In other words, yeah, we know the town that administrator, uh, the, the administrator's office would have to get proof of insurance on record because one of the things that's come up at previous meetings yeah, is the sharks. And the town wants to be sure that um, things can proceed People can have lessons, which I'd rather have people educated in the salt water with the sharks than not just going out there. But the people that do that, such as yourself, have to have enough insurance to cover that kind of contingency. That should not be a town liability. And this also may be a good idea to include more ponds again, which I'm, I would think might be on our beach director's mind, that since there are sharks, there are people going to be looking to do activities more inland. <laughs> and that, um, again, any business that's been doing this for years knows how to educate people on, on the water quality and the, and the water use. So now may I have a motion? I move to approve the use of Chipman's Cove, Indian Neck, Long Pond, Great Pond, Whitecrest Beach, and Gull Pond from May 1st to November 1st, 2019, subject to the conditions, if any, as listed on the application form for a fee of $500 uh, with proof of adequate insurance to be determined by the town administrator. Is there is that, a second? Dan, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Sounds perfect. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Four uh, against, opposed. So one opposed, Kathleen's opposed. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And now moving on to um, Sacred Surf School. You wanna come up to the microphone, please? Uh, your choice. Um, okay, so this is a mo um, 
sacred surf lessons, uh, White Crest Beach. He's been doing this for how many years? It's our 10th season. Yeah. So, um, any questions from the board or the audience even? I have one question, Madam Chair. I was just curious, it says town services requested parking stickers for instructors. Um, what do you mean by that? There's a handful of instructors who live not in Wellfleet and other towns that uh, get stickers through the beach department. Okay, and that's typical, that's happened in the past? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's probably, it's like two, question. maybe three people. It's, it's pretty minimal. Uh, Kathleen? Zach, did you have a, a preference for Whitecrest this year and not Newcomb or? Uh, well, Whitecrest is the only non-resident parking beach, so when people come, okay. that's the only place they can pay to. But that wonderful park. troughs at Newcomb. Yeah, you know, maybe we're trying to avoid Newcomb this year. Okay. Uh, any other questions? May I have a motion? I move to approve the use of Whitecrest Beach by Sacred Surf School from June 1st to September 2nd, 2019, subject to the conditions, if any, as listed on the application form for a fee of $500. Is there a second? Uh, uh, no, no mention of insurance. Um, I send it in, after I get approved, I always send it in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Contingent upon insurance. Approved proof of insurance. Proof of, insurance. of adequate okay. insurance to be determined by the TA. Okay. All, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you. Five. Unanimous. Unanimous. Thank you. And now we have Pamela Berrio for Bakerfield. Do you want me to bring you a microphone? And you can just, okay. Well, you, then, you, yep, that's the microphone for you then. <laughs> Thank you. And so this is an application for a celebration of life at Baker Field. Yes. About 25 people or so. Yeah. No fees will be charged. Um, any questions or comments from the board, from the audience? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I move to approve the use of Baker Field by Pamela Berrio on July 13th, 2019 from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. subject to the conditions, if any, as listed on the application. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Thank you for waiting <coughs> patiently. Thank you. And now Mayo Beach for, uh, use uh, by Walter Barron. And this is for the, oh, it's not on my front page. It's rowing for the rendezvous. annual rowing rendezvous. Rowing rendezvous. Uh, this is the seventh annual Wellfleet Rolling Rendezvous. Uh, we've had really good weather six, five out of six times. Uh, last year we had about 15 boats, including uh, a six oared gig from Plymouth, which was quite a popular boat. They were given lessons, you know, free lessons on how to row a big boat like that. We had about 80, 90 people. Uh, it's, it's a really well received thing. I don't charge any money for it. Uh, it's just a, a messing about. Yep. With the boats on the beach, basically. A fun time guaranteed for all. Yes. We have oysters and uh, box lunch sandwiches and a little thing to give away, and it's just a good time. Any questions from the audience? I mean, from the board? From the audience? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I, I move to approve the use of Mayo Beach by Walter Barron on September 21st, 2019, from 1 to 5 p.m., subject to the conditions, if any, as listed on the application. Second. S second. second. All in favor? Thank you. Good luck. Thank Madam you. Chair. Good luck. Oh. Thank Chair. you. Hmm? So you paid the processing fee? I did. Thank you. I have insurance, too. I was going to say that. Was, yeah, <laughs> good. Thank you. You'll be in boats. It's different. 
You're not teaching. Well, they kind of did teach. Okay, moving on to um, make sure I've got the right agenda. Review and discussion of. Were we going to talk about this tonight? Yep. I this, we were going to talk about this. Is that if it's not something that can be drug out. It's okay. Real quick, right, Nancy? Okay. That's right. Good. Go. Drug out. Just consider this step one. <laughs> so this is, again, uh, discussion about a shellfish nursery upweller analysis report. Right. I don't know. Um, it, it was a little lengthy, but it also uh, was written, I felt, in very clear English, uh, easy to understand. Um, the main purpose of this was to analyze the feasibility of using two buildings that the town was considering um, as possibilities for an upweller. One was the old shellfish shack that Dennis had brought up, Dennis Murphy had brought up, and the other was back when we were originally considering the purchase of three Kendrick, well, could we use that for an upweller? Um, so because of that, we thought, let's let's have an engineer come and look and see what are the feasibilities here. While he was there, I said, you know, look at something maybe on the pier. I spoke with Mike Flanagan and Will Sullivan, and they said, sure, analyze, have, throw that into the analysis. And then I wanted to compare it to how we have been jump-starting our propagation program. So an upweller provides a nursery where you can purchase smaller seed at a cheaper price and grow it yourself before you put it um, out onto our propagation bed to finish growing out, and then it gets distributed to the wild. Um, right now, just to get us jump-started, because the department's been quiet for a few years, um, we've been buying bigger seed, and so we can put it right into what's called field plants. We can get it right onto our propagation bed, it's, uh, and we grow it till it's predator resistant, and then we can broadcast it out to the wild areas. However, um, then Johnny and I were at Constable School, and we heard a presentation by the county of yet another method, which was using basically racks and bags or cages and putting very small seed into bags with liners. And could that be a cheaper, more effective way of buying smaller seed, but growing it out in a way like right on our beds? So I threw that into the mix late because I learned it late. And that really did not seem like something worth pursuing, especially as if you read the analysis um, comparing the different options. Um, this tag, uh, tag, uh, the tag group says um, it's probably best not to um, do do the stuff on the grant like that. It's it hasn't been tested. Uh, for cohogs. Cohogs is what we really need. They were very encouraging about our culch program. Culching being, you know, we're blessed in Wellfleet with wild oyster recruitment. And so we should, like, they think that's a great thing that we're doing because by culching the harbor, you're providing habitat, you're recruiting oysters from the wild. So that's something that we should definitely con continue doing, but we don't really have that great of an option for cohogs. So my feeling coming out of reading this report is Shellfish Shack, no. <laughs> Three Kendrick, no. Um, the, the county experiment of doing the bags in, on the grant, no. And so I'd like to take the feedback. You know, They're suggesting because of the ancillary benefits of education with an upweller on the pier, and the opportunities that we would have, uh, you know, they're they're kind of saying that would be a good use of town resources to do something on the pier. Um, That's where it was before. Uh, it, there were flupsies. So the flupsies are the floating upwellers. That's the least expensive way to go. It's what the town has experiment um, experience working with. But we just have to make sure that we have enough water, even after dredging. I'm not 100% sure. Johnny did say they had them and they worked before. But my idea would be we've got some big picture analysis back. We've kind of crossed off the two main things that people were saying would be good and proved with this analysis that they're not good options for the town. I would like to take another step and explore the feasibility of either an upweller on the pier or 
uh, flupsies. And I feel like there's still more that we need to do in terms of determining access to water and, um, and, and the expenses of, um, of running an upwiler nursery on the pier. Uh, I did send the report to Mike and Will at the Harbor Masters. They are more than willing to work with us. Uh, they think that having on the pier is a great idea. Their one suggestion back was that it be movable because you use it from June to October, but you don't want it there the whole time. So I went back to tag uh, the tag group here that did it, and they said that's not a problem. We could even put it on trailers and make it be portable. Yeah. So there's ways of uh, working around it. Uh, the numbers in here are great to start with, but I think you know, I had done some initial research, and the numbers for the flupsies are so much uh, different that you know I think I'd like to, to chase down some more numbers so that I am prepared for some capital expenditures and, and some discussions during budget time. So my idea would be to, you know, go into phase two, analyzing the two, and then maybe we can make an, a decision on what we think would be the best use of town resources for um, a, a nursery system. So you know how I've been in support of this, right? Mm -hmm. I've told you I'm excited and get going on it. So somebody with very good knowledge has said that um, providing seed, do, having our own propagation, um, would decrease the genetic diversity. And that that's, um, would you comment on that? How does that decrease if you're buying well, because, seed from because other Because we're places. producing the seed, we being Wellfleet, uh, producing the seed, everybody's buying the same seed no, so we would be buying it from a hatchery. So, for example, this year the county and the state gave us about $6,000 in funds, and ARC won the county bid. So we'll be getting um, oysters from ARC. We've ordered quahog seed from Bay Farms in New Jersey. Um, so, so we're always going to be ordering from a hatchery, and you just we're able to order at a smaller size, and we're not reselling these to anybody. We are going to use them, grow them out till they're predator resistant, and then spread them out between the recreational and commercial areas in the harbor. So okay. I don't see how it okay. decreases. <coughs> um, Justina, I'm going to be quick and then defer to Mike, who knows more about this than I do. Um, I think what Janet's saying is when you get seed from elsewhere, it's not native to uh, Wellfleet, and I can't speak for Quahogs, but I know that the seed from elsewhere um, really doesn't produce the same kind of oyster. They're often squirrely and um, thin-shelled and don't grow, grow out great versus the spat that we collect here. I mean, you probably know all this. The spat that we collect here is a different uh, stock, and it, um, it's better oyster. And so I'm going to defer to Mike, who had his hand up. Um, yeah, um, well, I, it, seed coming from a hatchery is less genetic diversity because they're from the same parent oysters or clams. So when you put that on a, a large scale, but uh, farms are doing that um, all the time. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm a little skeptical as to whether we really need an upweller when we have such an abundance of spat in the harbor, natural spat, and ways to collect them, and people have been doing it, and, and the town at once had hats themselves to collect native set, which is not all native. It does come from hatcheries as well, but the thing is, when there's millions of oysters spawning in the harbor, the genetic diversity of those oysters breeding together, along with native oysters, it, it creates m much more genetic diversity in the harbor so that if the town can collect native or collect uh, natural sp uh, spawn in the harbor um, and then grow that out, it's going to spawn and increase the diversity. Because one of the problems we have with the monoculture of oysters in the town and um, the farm, the, the farm raised product that a lot of it has come from the hatchery, that um, there's a susceptibility to disease from having that. The other thing, I'm, I'm not so sure why. Um, we would write off rack and bag and nursery bags so quickly because, I mean, I know just from experience, we've used that for, for seven years. Uh, two millimeter seed, it's like the size of a Sharpie dot, and we probably plant like four or 500,000 of those on our bed, and I know a lot of people are using nursery bags, and then um, 
I just think maybe we should look into, because Wellfleet actually has had a high rate of success with nursery bags, and there's a reason why no farms have their own upwellers, even if they have slips or, or uh, access to the, to the L pier. Um, a chopper grows stuff in nursery bags, and he has a slip right on the part of the deepest part there. He could have a flupsy. Uh, so I, I just think, I'm not sure personally um, whether it's worth the expenditure for the town um, to go that direction. I'm not opposed to it. I just think that, um, that you know, we should probably look into what people are using now and, and, and how successful that is. And maybe the town can apply those same methods at a lower cost. I mean, that sounds good. Can I answer that? Yes, sure. So I have a couple yeah. of things I want to say. Number one, um, the way that I put together a propagation program is multi-pronged mm -hmm. so that if recruitment fails or we get ice that you know, devastates that, re that year's recruitment, we have a little something to throw into the harbor you know, that you, you can't put all your bets on wild. I totally agree with you, and I think most of our expenditures should be in culching, but I, I hesitate to totally give up on oysters, um, doing some oyster seed. And my concern with the, um, which I didn't talk about earlier, with the um, mesh bag system is labor. So how many people do you have helping you on a low tide usually? Two or three sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I have one, maybe two. Right. Right, because we're on patrol north, especially in the summer, north and south. Then I have Johnny, and now I have Andrew. But I don't have Andrew five days a week. I mean, I would be willing to do that, but I would like to look at more staff to, to handle it because they do take cleaning, is my understanding. Sure. Uh, um, Madam Chair. Or yes. Just I just have know. a real quick comment. Well, I know you got a ton of culch from the guys when they dropped off oh, shells for you, right? Maybe you could get people to put um, nursery bags on their grant and donate it. Get the community to contribute. To contribute. Um, if, uh, if people labor. had time and they wanted to. Yeah, maybe we have like, uh, maybe we, yeah, maybe we have a Your program where they are babysitting yeah. ours. Yeah, mm. if people would be into that. So just, just that we can keep moving f forward and this is a discussion and a presentation thank you for doing all this great information Fabulous. keep it going and we'll just start hearing from the shellfish advisory board shell fishermen the pier um, and keep keep going janet i haven't spoken yes a couple things how much did this cost yeah yes. i think the analysis yes. i think it was around five thousand mm -hmm. dollars worth every penny it's really good yeah I agree. And detailed, precise. I agree with Mike. And the thing that hasn't been mentioned here is we are, if all goes well, and I certainly hope it does, we are about to get probably access to having propagation by the town happen on the Hilton property. In other words, this is a new thing that's coming into view. Would it be good there? Would it not? But considering that we've been renting, right, a place for years off Chiquesa Neck, right? So we're not renting anymore. Yeah. Right. I, I, right. That ended, I know that. but we still have the agreement over there. Yes, I know that. But the point is, if there is going to be this new area, what might be considered possible over there should enter into all of this. And um, thank you for having this done. Mm -hmm. And that's all I wanted to say right now. But basically, Mike said about 50% of what I wanted to say, and the rest of what Mike said, I didn't know. <laughs> so. And the other thing I just will say is that we can't forget cohogs in this equation. We don't have no. natural, so we might decide that we would do use the upweller for cohogs for and cohog. find yeah. other systems. So that might cut <clears throat> down on the number of silos that we would need. So that's something else that I could bring back mm -hmm. um, if we decide that we can continue to work with them to do a subsequent set of analysis. Great. Wonderful. Great work. And so would you think that that's a good idea for me to continue to do? Yeah, I think so. You know, and you already get input from the shellfish advisory board and from the shell fishermen and mm -hmm. the harbor people. So yeah, just and always keep on going. Madam Chair? Yes. And always factor labor into it. 
because the upwellers take labor too, the bags take labor, yeah. and what kind of labor and when, and so on and so forth, and how much more do we need? I think the, there is some of that in there. Um, it's all in the in details, here. but uh, yes, and, and I think labor is a big, big question. And then do you want to stay up there while we, um, you, you accept the yes. grant from SPAT? Does Michelle you, want Michelle. to come up and present? And the board. Well, let's <laughs> let's have Michelle come up and present or uh, tell her what grant. Tell us what grant Spat is awarding. So SPAT is awarding a $17,700 community grant to the Wellfleet Shellfish Department to support their recreational shellfishing program. So they'll be uh, putting out some hat collection devices and the, the part, of the, part of it is the relay program. Mm -hmm. So that will enhance the, the recreational industry. We felt strongly about something that really helped you know, the collective, you know, so people who recreationally harvest, also commercial harvesters, because these oysters will, these, sh the shellfish will spawn and then create shellfish for the commercial wild harvesters as well. Wow. And part of the program, um, as I mentioned earlier tonight, part of the Quahog program is also in Chipman's Cove, which is open both recreationally and commercially. And because of this grant, we were able to increase our order to 400 bushels, so doubling last year's order of um, Quahog. So it was really great. That's great. Good. And helping us outfit the barge so that we are able to do our culching effectively. We're using it tomorrow morning to put the Quahogs out. Um, so they really are coming to the table with, um, you know, by the time uh, I inherited the Colch Barge budget, so much time had gone by that it really wasn't enough. And so they came to the table and helped us with, like, the safety outfitting of it. Um, they're going to help us buy some extra shell, uh, sea clam shell, but a lot of uh, a GPS unit to help us track our culching. So lots of things that... Uh, weren't taken into consideration before and that they're really, you know, this is kind of a one-time purchase that now the department will be able to use for a very long time. Yeah, great. Kathleen? I think it's um, fantastic. Thank you, Michelle. I mean, um, Nancy put together um, a very concise budget, um, and I believe we had to taper it down a little bit this year because, you know, she needs a lot. So you're really helping... Um, you know, uh, this department that's been kicked to the curb for a long time with um, augmenting it with some, you know, some really good stuff. So thank you. You're welcome. We're happy to do it. Any other comments from the board? Just a quick one. Um, may the board formally ask Michelle to say thank you to the SPAT board so we don't have to write a letter, but can, you know. Oh, we should write a letter. Yeah, okay. We or, letter's can, in there. What? We, I have there's to one sign in there. The we oh, there is. Accept, oh. We have to oh, yeah. accept. Too good. Yeah. Okay, good. It's all set they, to go. They would love that. <laughs> 17 grand. Yeah. a um, letter. Okay. I don't want to do it, though. Well, we, we have a very have good letter writer so. write, write it in written. our midst. It's terrific. So. We, we have our next meeting on June 3rd, so I could present it to them then. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank And uh, I reiterate what Helen said. Thank everybody. Oh, yeah. On spat. So may I have a motion? To I will move to approve the acceptance of the SPAT grant award to the Wealthy Shellfish Department in the amount of seventeen thousand seven hundred. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of work always going on. All right. So um Marijuana. Yes. So I don't know if you guys have a, an, an agenda, but we're going to discuss first the, um, our, 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 we're going to just discuss our policy on marijuana dispensaries. 
Then we're going to discuss Hilta, and then we're going to go into the host agreement. So is Why the don't we have them before here? or close? No, we took the shellfish shack oh, off. Okay. Okay. Waiter for that. Because this is there's long meetings. Is there a reason why we have Hilta before the host agreement? Mm -hmm. That's what you told me to put it on. You know, we were taking we were some off together. and replacing some yeah. after it had already been posted. So that's just okay. why you can take them out of order if you want to move it along. It Should we do the marijuana? I'm just worried about uh, you guys spending another hour or two here. You've been so good. You're getting you're getting ready to run for a select person because you know our process so well. But they live in Truro. What were you going to say? They live in Truro. Yeah, that's true. Well, they'll move Should here. Should we do the marijuana stuff first? Yes. Because we have to Yes, be that's here no what I think what. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I th and Hilton may take a, uh, take a long time. So um, uh, we'll discuss the marijuana policy first that we're thinking about. So may I ask a question? Yes, you may. So through you to um, Kathleen, this is just me with my detail-oriented brain. Kathleen, did you get all the relevant documents that were supplied to us at the meeting last week? Yeah, about... Oh. Marijuana? Yeah, and all the stuff from uh, town council and everything. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I'd like to add to that is we left that meeting with a question, which uh, Dan Hort confirmed, you know, checked out, which is once we approve a host agreement, we don't have anything more to do with it. Correct. And this was confirmed afterwards. In other words, you know, we're the select board and whatever, but um, we don't get the business coming back to us for a business license. Right. Okay. Good. Um, so as I said, we're going to discuss. Um, did everybody read the information? And do we? How do we want to handle this? Do we want to start creating a policy now, or do we want to just go over what was given to us and then have a policy presented to us in two weeks? Um, what did we discuss? What did we discuss so, to do? Wait, I'm going to ask Mr. Hort first. So what our tentative thought was is that um, you could make a motion to limit the number of host community agreements to either five or four, uh, depending if you wanted to permit the one to come through uh, that's coming up on your agenda later. Um, and then direct the town administrator to come back to you with a policy on uh, uh, host community agreements. So that would, you know, having listened to your conversations, that would basically my instructions are, you know, we want something with local preference. We want something that's a year-round business. So be able to incorporate those things into a policy of any future host community agreements. That's what we would be looking for. But if you limit it to, to five or four, you would then put a pause on it until we have it a policy in place. That's right. Okay. That's what we, yeah, that's what we discussed. So everybody's clear on that. Kathleen was the only one that wasn't at the meeting. Um, Justina? I have a quick question. Um, it's my recollection, the town meeting before last, we passed a, a warrant article um, proposed by Hel Helen lim limiting providing guidelines to limit and then voted for it at the ballot box. Um, but meanwhile, we're in a situation um, for one reason or another, we have four approved host agreements, not all of which may come to fruition, and a deserving young gentleman um, who'd like, like another one, which would bring it to five. Why can't we have the policy be consistent with the spirit of... Um, the number, even if temporarily we uh, may be in town, have approved more um, than we would like going forward. And then when giving us grounds, if, if and when somebody drops out, we're not required. You see what I'm trying to say? Because mm -hmm. yes. I'd, I'd, I'd rather approve uh, the old bank, um, know that we've approved five, and have a policy that, that states what we want. Would, yeah, I agree. I think so, if too. If I can respond to yes. Selectman Vic, or, uh, Carlson's comments, that's basically what we would do is, as I said in our first host community agreement, it, was, it wasn't written like it should have been. Mm -hmm. We've, since uh, numbers two going forward, we've written it a little bit with a little bit uh, closer parameters so that if somebody does not open up a 
uh, retail dispensary within two years of when they sign the agreement, then the host community agreement is void. So if you should listen, if you should make your policy that you're going to limit them to five, and here's the policy that you're going to look at when you provide any more, then as soon as somebody runs past that two-year expiration date and their host community agreement is is void, then you could then follow your policy as to what you want to, how you would allow the fifth host community agreement that would be replacing the one that dropped out, you know, based on local preference, based on year round, that um, information. I was actually suggesting something different, which was the policy specifically enumerates, Helen, I forget how many we had in, under yours, 80%? We had uh, three. And then we just, the yeah, three. And then we say recognizing, you know, you say this in legal language, but recognizing uh, uh, the initial circumstances, we currently have five, and it's the uh, goal of the policy to, to have less. I don't see why we have to have five just because we have f five horses in the barn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair? Um, Mike had his hand up first it, a while um, ago. Personally, I just prefer to uh, put parameters on, on what we expect of the businesses, like whether they're year-round or not, and the type of... Uh, I, I, I think we went over this last time, Dan. I can't remember, but, uh, like, can we have a policy set where, you know... Um, in order to get a host agreement, they would have to find a space that's been unutil unutilized or, or potentially not used, we or could, businesses have changed in that location. If I may respond, mm -hmm. um, we can certainly put that in our policy, that if it's, it's kind of an economic engine, sort of, is that it's revitalizing a, 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 a building that has been abandoned or been underused for a period of time, and that could be in our policy. Yeah, in my, in my view, I don't, I don't personally think that we should be treating this any differently than we treat alcohol. Uh, when the police were here earlier, the incidents that were reported were all alcohol-related incidents, and I think that's generally the case. And I'm not so sure that we really should be treating this differently as far as like how many businesses we allow compared to that. But I would like to see these businesses, if we're going to allow them, um, be a benefit to the community economically throughout the year. And I think more importantly to me than putting a number on it is putting a restraint that the people who are actually going to be doing it are committed to the town. And but I think a year-round policy would would do that. We voted on that, though. What? I think, I know how you feel about it. I'm sorry, I'm out of no. order, but um, it's yeah. going to come down to what the board wants about numbers. Yeah, it's at the, sure, dis sure. It's I'm at just the telling discretion you of the board. But I think that um, we had, at our last selectmen's meeting, we discussed this, and then at the last meeting on um, Thursday, we discussed this, and there was a general consensus it wasn't really an agreement there was a, there was possibly consensus that we would uh, because we do have five applicants and if you read mr. Mintz's um, letter there are a number of um, problems that he had with getting in front of our board and asking due to town meeting and other things so um, again I, yeah we, I think Mr. Horton knows what we want. Did everybody get the Attleboro uh, email of their, of their, um, um, okay, so you mentioned it that, I didn't have the email address. yeah, no, 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 I, I guess, uh, yeah, I looked up the link that North Attleboro has like a 40 page, um, maybe 30, maybe 20 pages of, of their, their bylaws, but that's besides the point that there's a lot of things we can do. So we kind of discussed that we we don't want to scare the town, <laughs> which is already scared, that we're going to just go and allow a lot. But because there are five applicants, we kind of felt comfortable that maybe we'd allow five, but no more than five until we get a po policy into place. Um, that's kind of my recollection. Oh, I'm I just, sorry. I don't, I've I'm had my what, hand up oh, now. Okay. For a really long time. Okay, okay, You're dying. okay. But, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we did not reach a consensus about a number. 
No, we didn't. And if we have a policy, the use of the policy, in my mind, being very familiar with the policies, is that it simply sets out criteria for us. Yes. And in response to what Mike said through you, um, the kind of thing you brought up is the kind of thing the ZBA would adjudicate about. In other words, detrimental to the neighborhood can also be, is it good for the neighborhood, you see? Mm -hmm. And so if there's a building that they're applying, a specific spot, that is absolutely CBA jurisdiction, and I would not want it in one of the select board policies, okay? The local preference thing is more our venue or our, you know. Oversight. Thank you. And we have to be very careful what we put in a policy that doesn't discriminate illegally in any way. I would like to have no number in it because what we passed at town meeting said at our discretion, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And we want to be able, and future boards want to be able to look at the whole situation and say, you know, we've already got 10 of these and they're all doing really well and that's enough. Do you see what I mean? We don't want a number. Or we want to be able to say, we already have three of these. Some of them have gone out of business and that's enough because we want them to function year round and have enough customers. And meanwhile, there are 70 million in Provincetown. So let's not put a number in our policy. The second thing, set of things I want to say is that our last meeting, our work meeting, we got a lot of answers and we got an additional answer since then about whether or not we had to then subsequently vote on a business license. And without a policy, I would be happy to then consider the applicant later this evening because what I cared the most about was us getting the answers we got from town council before we went farther. And I think I know how I feel about it and I'm looking forward to hearing what the rest of the board feels about the fifth applicant who I refuse to personalize. In other words, the fifth applicant. Okay. Yeah. I think that's smart. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So um, this, this is just discussion. I don't think we're, sounds to me like people are thinking about this more and more. Do you want to make reason, a motion? We don't yeah. even need a motion on this, but yeah. yeah. The reason I want to limit the number is because a lot of people in town, I think, are justifiably nervous. And um, we voted for legalizing marijuana, but we didn't, we didn't, we're, we don't want it to be like art galleries. There's a marijuana store everywhere. There's nothing wrong with taking it bit by bit. So I, I don't want, because because we sort of goofed a little bit, we've got five, so it's like, oh shucks, five, five is our policy. My policy, and nobody has to agree with me, is four. Um, three to four, I don't think that there's, if it's fabulous to have all these marijuana places, we can add some more, but Right now, there's no protection for the people in town who um, who, who aren't comfortable with it. And just because, and we, we do have votes because of Helen's warrant article. We do have votes that the town wants to limit it. We have no data that they don't, other than people talk to people who said they kind of wanted this and that. So I think we ha do have a responsibility to protect our community and to go a little slower than we we're going, and I would like a policy that spells out less than five. So, a policy that what? It is less than five, four. And if we have five, find a way to say, okay, right now we have five approved ones, but our desired target is four, at least for the first three years of waiting to see what happened. And in terms of the traffic accidents on Memorial Day, they can't breathalyze uh, pot. And Colorado had a market increase in traffic fatalities after an emergency room. Business. Yeah, so it's it's like pot's great, but it is does get people high and then they crash the cars, just like booze. Okay, uh, Kathleen. Um, where to start on this one? From the very beginning with this issue, um, which came to me in my first year as being a selectman, I wanted to go slow. I wanted to get one in the queue, through the boards, 
operating and up and running so that we could see what it would have, uh, what the impact would be on the town and what the impact would be on um, the area that it was in. Um, but these people came in very quickly um, wanting host agreements. From the very beginning, I wanted just local preference. I wanted this to be an economy and a business that would benefit people like Zachary and his wife who have lived here and uh, you know, are part of the community. Um, we were told that it wasn't legal for us to give uh, local preference. So um, we slipped up on that. Um, I hear a lot from the residents, uh, much like Justina's just said, that they are, they're concerned about the impact that um, retail marijuana is gonna have in the town of Wellfleet. Um, I don't wanna be a small town with five outlets for marijuana. I, I think that's a prescription for, I, you know, I don't know. Um, does it affect us as a, a community that um, seasonally brings in a lot of families with uh, children and stuff like that? I, I don't have these answers. Um, so I was, uh, I'm a proponent of doing a lot less with this than more. Um, when the second group came to us um, for the South Wellfleet General Store, and I'm gonna be very honest, they sat at that table. They were so stoned, their eyes were barely open. Oh, I'm sorry, that's... It's, it's, I, I mean, I just no, couldn't, I couldn't, I yeah, don't know how I else to explain it. Uh, and when I, so Kathy, right, I'll that's, take that that's comment off the table. Inappropriate, I'll, I'll take that comment off the table. But when we said no, I think it was three weeks later, two weeks later, uh, through the town administrator, they let, well, they let the board of selectmen know that they were going to sue. Um, so, I mean, then we were like, okay, now what do we do? So Helen came up with something at town meeting that said at our discretion, we would limit them to three. No, no, that no, is not what was no. said. No, oh. that we have to have at least a three. A policy of by, at least no, three? No, state policy, state law, is that you have to have 20%, you have to allow 20% of the number of alcohol. Which uh, for us would have been three? Yeah. Which for us would be three. That, that is the minimum we can have. And now we're at five. Well, so this is what, so we're going back and forth a lot, and we had a really good discussion last Thursday. And um, has anybody here read the marijuana regulations in our bylaws? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. You mean, excuse me, in the zoning bylaws? In the zoning bylaws. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. So you know that it's not, it's not easy. Um, again, we've, we started this process three years ago um, so it's not like we have, we have the host agreements, but we do not have the businesses. Uh, it is not that easy, and we are gonna come up with our policy, possibly by next meeting we can say things. Um, but I think it would be uh, good for us since with good intention we have five applicants. I would like to see us allow five applicants and then, um, see who ends up showing up. And we could, uh, I would say unofficially, what would be the right word, unofficially say that after tonight, if we're allowing five up applicants, we are not gonna allow any more host agreements until some actually start coming in, until we actually get some businesses operating and seeing how it goes. But that's, that's a whole nother thing that we could, you know, so. Um, do you have something new to add? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I don't like talk of numbers. What we voted at town meeting gives us a way when somebody comes before us and we've got somebody later on the agenda that we look at that case and we think about it. And we have discussed here and at the other meeting some very nice clear criteria that we can bring up and that will be in the policy. 
But saying what we will do in the future if somebody else applies, I think is kind of dangerous. Um, I would agree with you in general. My main concern through you to Mike <coughs> is that I want, what we have now with liquor stores is all year round, there are uh, basically three liquor stores in Wellfleet that are open pretty much. No, two that are open pretty much. Well, the market but you, ha you, have to consider, yeah, you have to consider them all. Yes, yeah. no, I know. All right. But full range liquor stores, we actually have two open, and then you can get you know, beer here and there. Here's my point. If we allow dispensaries for marijuana, I would want them to be reliable for the people that want to use them and also so that they have a customer base that's reliable. Because if we have lots and lots, they are not going to be able to stay open all year. And I am not one who thinks people should stay open. So one of the, you know, when they can't, when they can't afford it. And these, these dispensaries have to have way more going on in terms of employees and surveillance and security than any liquor store. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be profitable so they can stay in business and we can begin to depend on them. And that is why I don't think I would vote for one after another after another. I would want to hold back for a while. But I wouldn't want to put a number on it. OK. And I also, in the, in the policy, I would like us to have discretion about whether it would be seasonal or year round. Oh, yeah. yeah, we've already Just discussed like that. We, we feel like it should be year round. All right, so is there? Um, a motion. So we actually don't even need. It's this just is a just discussion, discussion, right? So yeah. we don't even need a motion on this. Okay. Uh, so we will probably have. So you're going to work on a policy. Yes. You're going to compare, look up that Attleboro one again. I don't think we need to go to that extreme. I think we've already had. We already have a lot of those comments from the At the Attleboro bylaw that their town planner wrote. A lot of ours are in there, but anyhow, yeah, so work on it. Make sure Mr. Hort has all of our suggestions. I think he gets the idea, uh, can look at the minutes, and we will move on. Okay. Can I make one yes. more quick comment? Um, I'm not opposed. To, I'm not calling for a free-for-all of right. marijuana dispensaries. Not I'm happen. not saying, like, yeah. you know, I, I just think that, you know, as far as businesses go, we should be wary of sort of like granting people uh, guaranteed success by limiting the number to too small. Like I, I personally think that the that people are going to have to make a business decision as to whether they want to operate in a town that has a crowded market. First of all, and then second of all, people are going to go to the to the places that are best giving customer service and yeah. providing a good product where they feel secure. And um, and I think that too many is a problem. I just don't see it actually going that direction, especially if we provide some sort of limitations that would sort of sway people the opposite way. But too few can also be a problem where we sort of guarantee people success mm -hmm. that don't necessarily yeah. deserve mm -hmm. it in the business world. Yeah. And that's where my concern comes from about putting a small number on it. I think that if we can sort of make it sort of self-selective by saying, you know, yeah, in the future we would like uh, all host agreements to commit to be an open year round. I mean, I know we can't go backwards, but had that been in the beginning, then you don't get people who are applying who just want to be open from June to Labor Day and then cut and leave with all the cash that they rake in exactly. and not provide service to the community. So when I say, you know, I don't think we, I, I think like alcohol is just as problematic. We don't see it that way because it's been around a long time. Um, but, you know, the fact is you can go, it's not just uh, ca cash and carry. I mean, there's bars after bar after bar where it's served on the premises. People drive to those premises. Um, the, there every day sometimes. You go to the liquor store every single day. I know just from being in places where dispensaries are legal, you, people go once a week. It's, you know, the, the most surprising thing I saw when I was in Colorado were how many, like, grandmas were in the dispensary sort of giddy about the 
<laughs> idea of being in there and like the fact that it's legal and recreational. And in the future, we won't think twice about uh, walking into a store and being able to buy a product. And I just want to say also is that not everything's about THC. There's a lot of people using um, non-THC um, CBD uh, strains that ha are not intoxicating that you can't get on the black market. And the fact is 80%, I think, of the town voted for the legalization yeah. for the, of recreational marijuana. Uh, that's kind of a mandate, if you ask me. And I, I think that um, the fact is that people are already using it all over town before it was legal recreationally, and they were just buying it from some guy, you know? And that, that's really, you know, the difference is here, we have lab tested, like guaranteed, Control, yeah. controlled product. And, you know, when I was in high school, it was a lot easier to get a bag of weed than it was to get a beer, you know? Yeah. And that's sort of, you know, that's my experience um, growing up on, on Cape Cod. And, and now we have a lot worse things, you know, to worry right. about than alcohol or marijuana. Um, and so I'll just leave it at that, but. Yeah, I want to kind of assure the public that we're not, there's not going to be a free for all. You know, we are looking at these all carefully. And again, it takes a, a while to get approved by the Cannabis Commission and that we are all, we here five, we here five, we five here, um, you know, we're volunteers. We, we really care about the town. We're putting in a lot of time and a lot of work to keep Wellfleet, Wellfleet. So for the TV audience, you know, rest assured, but we will come up with some a good policy. So moving on. So are you are you Mr. Norton or are you here for the marijuana? Yeah, I'm here to congratulate Chris. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Well, thanks for staying. I stay. Yeah. So are we going to go So we're to we're going we are going to go um to, go right uh, to yes, we're going to now uh take the Old Bank Marijuana Host Community Agreement, Community Agreement ahead of Hilta. So again, I think that we have um, discussed this. We know the whole, the whole plan. And if anybody wants to discuss this further, you may do so now. Yes. We're not acting right now on any policy or anything from what we just discussed. Is that no, right? we are gonna, we're either going to approve or disapprove the host agreement. Okay, but what we just the discussion we just had, we have no requests nope. to set any policy no. for the next, okay. No. I'm just clarifying. I know, it's, confu okay. it's confusing. I just want to make and sure. And actually I want to say thank you for your opinion on that about having to, limiting the stores to, you had a you had good, good opinion on that. Okay, there we go. Uh, yes, Helen. So um, once again, we got the contract and the word allow is not in there. So when we're signing things, remember that one word mm -hmm. that is weird? Are we signing things without that being changed to allow? Probably. Um, um, how does if, it- If I may, I, I brought a copy of the contract and made that change. Thank you. That added allow yeah, to that you. section. It was basically a context typo on the part of yeah. whoever drafted it. And it doesn't cover. Would you read for the audience the sentence that you wanted that in, please, so Sorry. they know what we're talking you bet. about? Once again, yeah. If you can find it. Yeah, I can find it. I can find it. What page is it on, Helen? I don't know yet. Here we go. It's uh, page six. It's limitation of other uses. So, what I've asked now, I think this is the fourth time. The company agrees, I would like the wording, I think the wording should be, the company agrees that it will not allow on-site social consumption of adult use marijuana. The language mm -hmm. here. Yeah, well, and what was the previous language? Well, the language well, actually says the people who work there can't use it, but it doesn't say anything about the customers, okay. which is not the purpose of this section. Right. So yeah. that's it. Good. Yeah. Uh, Shall I read it to you again? No. No, it's okay. That's I, okay. I got it somewhere in here. Yeah. All right. So, um, you fixed it, right? So, the, the copy that I brought, if I may, uh, reads The company agrees that it will not, this is uh, section E on, six page, on the sixth page. The company agrees that it will not allow or engage 
in the on-site social consumption, et cetera, before it only said engage, yeah. and I think that was a typo. Thank you. Yeah, and that's, that's right. even better. Yeah. So you Good. can't use it if you're on the job either. It's illegal, but it's in the contract as well now. Thank you. Would you like Justina? a message? Yes, I would, please. Um, at long last, I move to approve the house to community agreement with Zachary Ment doing business at the Old Bank LLC at 30 Main Street. Second. 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 Can I make a correction? Just clerical. It's 10 Main Street. 10 Main what? Street. It's oh. 10 Main Street. That was a typo as well. 10 Main Street. Slip. That's Town Hall. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they'd like you to open up there. Um, do I need to rewrite it? Does Mike want to say something? I just something? have a question. Okay. I, I'm Sorry. just wondering, are you planning on staying open year-round? Yes, I've specifically designed the space to be expandable during the summer out season. Okay. I seconded it. You seconded Justina's motion? Yeah, with okay. amended address. Yes. Okay. okay, very good. They don't have enough office space, town hall. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, all in favor? Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank I you. appreciate your time. I yes. brought uh, a couple signed copies help. if you'd like me to stay after or. Um, okay, yeah. fantastic. Give, yeah. give them to Courtney and we'll <laughs> sign them. To yeah. Know us well. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep coming. It's very good, entertaining. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Um, so I am also going to take out of order uh, so Mr. O'Connell doesn't fall asleep the change of committee size of the parking task force. Um, and it's very simple. Uh, they would, they're requesting nine members, uh, specifically because a certain man, Bruce Catcher, has been doing a lot of work and they would like him on the committee. But it is a big job and probably the more members they have, the better. So, um, that, That's fairly stated. Uh, I, I, I would also, just for history, uh, the way we decided how many people were, or you decided how many people were on the committee was how many volunteers we had. True, uh, yeah. And uh, at the time, there was some concern with having an even number instead of an odd number. That's right, yeah. uh, And we all know the, those kind of rules. Uh, and the other thing is that this change from eight to nine will not change the quorum uh, because it's still five. Whether you have eight or nine people, it's still five. We've had one meeting uh, where we lost the quorum, uh, <laughs> so we had to shut down real quickly. But uh, other than that, we're not having any trouble. And uh, I, I was hoping, kind of hoping that you might be able to have uh, an appointment of Bruce Catcher, but I guess that'll be on the next r agenda. He, oh, okay. he did put in an application, didn't he? Yes, he I did. I thought I saw it. He yeah. did. And we had him under appointments, but we couldn't appoint him until we increased that's right, the size that's of the right, committee. That's right, yeah. Okay. So we'll do that next time. And we'll, we're also planning to come to your next meeting, June 11, to give you an update on where we are and what, what we have to say. So Good. request that you increase our size, please. May I have a motion? No, Janet, I have a question. Okay. So the regular members will remain at five, but you want to add? No, there's eight. Now, hold on a minute. You just said the quorum was not going to change. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So there are eight the, members Because now. five is the quorum for eight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you can get five every meeting? We have. Yeah. yeah. OK, thank you. That's all. OK, may I have I a I move motion? to increase the authorized membership from eight to nine members on the parking task force. Second. All in favor? Thank you. And we will um, hopefully, when you come to discuss and report on the parking task force, we will have the appointments beforehand so Mr. Ketcher can participate he's, freely, he's a, easily. He's been a wonderful citizen yeah, participant. Been. Uh, yeah. and so been a lot. He uh, really uh, has been helpful. So yes. thank you for taking me out of order. Thank you. I know. I wish uh, I might change the whole agenda. Just to, I, I just look at people staying around. So good. Thank you. All right, Thanks, um, and uh, so, and also while we're at it, we're going to change the charge of the committee size of the dredging task force, and that is requested just to um, um, eliminate the two alternates. 
on the dredging task force. Madam Chair. Yes. The problem was it said to change the charge, but there was no new charge included in the packet. Is it um, just the number of It people? is just the committee size that we had two, okay. that they had two alternates and yeah. they just want to drop the two alternates. So now it's, it's, it's just five, five. And then there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, what I would say, like officials. Of staff support. Staff support. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. Yeah. So may I have a motion to, dec to eliminate the two alternates on the parking task force? Can I just ask it? Yes, mm -hmm. judging task force. Why would they want to get rid of the alternates? Um, because they feel that the the committee is operating really well with five. There's five people right now on it that are that are really good, and um, yeah. And then you have you have the five staff. I'm just wondering, are there two alternates that are just getting cut? By they're the not committee there. Or? They're not even there. They're, they're not even there. Even, yeah, they're oh, not okay. even on there. I, so I was just curious. I just wanted to make sure kind of a there wasn't thing. somebody just like, let's get yeah. rid of these people. Yeah, no. No, no, oh, no you can't. It's you not know. that easy. <laughs> <laughs> and through you, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jen, so right I'm going to consider so moved. Um, all in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Did we have a second? No. Um, Helen seconded. I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I interrupted. Okay. Okay. So uh, just for the heck of it, we will appoint Jay Norton as an alternate to the Joint Transportation Commission. Uh, Madam Chair. You want to wait? What? Yes, please. Is he here? No. No. I would like to know a little more about him. Okay. He's uh, our assistant DPW director. Oh, yes. Yeah, I do know just, something about him. That is so cool. Thank you. Yes. Okay. No, I've met him. Yeah. He's, yeah. Can we just do that? Yeah. I'm looking. Yes, I think we can. Can I move to appoint? Uh, I I move to appoint Jay Norton as the alternate for Mark Vincent to the Joint Transportation Commission. Second. All in favor? Thank you. No, and how about a joint representation for town, for town and housing authority? So what about that? What this is is, as you recall, the uh, a couple of individuals filed uh, a lawsuit against the town regarding a parcel of land saying the town did not own this land. So it is being defended by KP Law, but also named as a defendant in the lawsuit was the housing authority. So right now you have two attorneys doing the same thing, one defending the town, one defending the housing authority, which is basically bleeding the housing authority dry. So uh, in a discussion with town council, um, our, uh, I can't think of the word I want to use, uh, our, um, the direction for both is the same. So we would not, there, we can't think of a situation where the housing authority's interest would be different than the town's. So the town council has recommended that we just have one uh, t that they, KP Law, One could represent both parties and then it wouldn't cost all this money to the housing authority. So um, I will keep an eye on it at all times just to make sure that we're always on the same, uh, that we have the same interest and town council will do the same. Uh, um, so I, I'm not getting something. <coughs> So the housing authority has its budget and the town has its budget, two mm -hmm. separate budgets. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and what you're saying is that the town will be picking up what it the housing cost... authority can't pay for. And we sort of already did that with a piece it of money. It won't cost the town any more. It will just be that both both parties don't have to have separate counsel for this. Yes, but as, they, as it is now, they both have to have separate counsel because they're both parties to the lawsuit. So you may not remember, but um, at do. the end of last fiscal year, we did a budget transfer of $15,000 to the housing authority just, just so they could pay their attorney fees. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked about it and I do remember. Yep. Okay, thank you. Good. Do you need a motion? Yeah. It's not, it's not on here, but we should have a motion, shouldn't we? It'd probably be a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Um, Something see. along the lines that the, the board um, agrees to have KP Law represent both the Housing Authority and the Town of Wellfleet in the Sexton lawsuit. 
So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Oh. You didn't, did you have a question? You're no, raising your hand. You're I was in up. favor yeah. before you okay. even asked Good. it. Okay, thank you. So that was <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> um, so do we want to go into Hilta or do we want to get rid of the personnel, not get rid of, do we want to complete the personnel contracts and MOU approvals? I would really like to do Hilta so that okay. our shellfish constable. Oh, that's what home. you're here for. I was wondering why you were still here. Okay, thank you for staying. Okay, Hilta, discussion of Hilta. Um, everyone knows. Oh, Everybody yeah, leaves the room. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was going, wait. No, no, I know. Do it's we just... need a bathroom break while we're here? Anybody? No, no, no I don't. don't. Do okay, you, okay do why don't water. you do that? Yep. Okay, so it's just me and you. Oh, God. I can't talk. <laughs> we have to wait. Um, <sighs> we can't. Yes, I did have supper. Yeah. I, I like to eat at four or five. You know. Yeah. What kind of sandwich do you have? I like the hot quok. Extra, extra hot. Zap. Extra zap. Okay, so you pick it up and it goes in. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, so it's really. Day, oh, God, you know, we're gonna yeah. do our makeup. So how can you eat a hot quok? And you're thin, and I eat hot box, and I gain weight. That's my quest in life. Uh, I'm not that thin that you are. No, well, okay, okay. Compared we're not to gonna, me. No, we're not going to do this. <laughs> are we off? <laughs> yeah, we're off. Yeah. Yeah, Your right. legs are thinner than mine. Can you maybe not have? No, I, I, we're, we're doing this right now. Well, you're, we're off. Because we're talking. Yeah, we're off. Anyhow. Oh, good. We're off. Right. We're talking about body stuff. <laughs> oh god so you know what courtney did she's so awesome she, yeah. so the video on demand was not on our web new new website which is really good because you don't have a picture of duck creek looking like the ganges which is what it looked like it was all the color of tea with milk in it and now we have a nice new fresh blue and white like you know town home page but there was no video on demand so i couldn't check the minutes which I don't, I don't go through the whole thing. I just go to certain sections of the minutes if I think I'm remembering something differently. So for, for what? For our meeting? Yeah. For when I'm do going through the minutes. Yeah. Why wasn't it on video on demand? Because they refreshed the When the website, website was converted. Oh, but so wait. That's right. okay. So I only got the amended minutes, you know, for the last meeting into Courtney this morning, and she got them to us. Wow. So she did it. Yeah. I don't know if it was a conscious decision, but what she had described to me was going to be changed out was not what was changed out. I thought those buttons on the bottom were going to be what we had on the side there, forms and all that, but it wasn't. So I'm I'm torn on how I want to handle that because the library had a, a link on the left-hand page, on the front home page, the Council on Aging did, Recycling Committee did. I, I can't have all that. So um, well, departments, I'm taking a look at it all. Because it's all yeah. under departments, so it's like just, you know. Yeah. yeah, departments always worked fine for me. Yeah, and Beaches I use it a lot. Who does our website? So it's Civic CMS is the company that okay. runs government websites. Virtual Town Hall helps with them, but content and all that is mostly. There's no one in our, in our IT group. I, no, I, Barnstable IT doesn't really do. Courtney is our, our website IT person. Yeah. Oh. Yes. So, you know, I was thinking. So, Courtney, it's tick season again. Yeah. So, could we have that? And it's an issue. You know, you get free tick testing yeah, in Wellfleet. Yeah. So, could it go up to the top of the list, or is the list alphabetical? Out. No. So that's the thing too with the, the news. Yeah, the news and announcement thing is. I wish that there's not a way to make things like stay at the top. Like today, I added the the recycling forum, and then it bumps everything down. So, like the note about hey, give us some time while we fix this. <laughs> A hot mess of a website isn't up there anymore, so it's hard when we add, I, the news and announcements part. I need to figure out because it doesn't really display well on the homepage, and it also I wish it wouldn't bump things. I, there needs to be a way you can just do it like that you can pin, pin it, it to the to, top. so it's like stays up there, you know. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. So the three of us are back. Let's we do are, it. I was say, oh. okay, now. Uh, so Tom, we're back, and now we will continue with discussion of the uh, purchase and sale agreement with Hilta Trust. Uh, who would like to begin? 
um, may I, by you asking may. Kathleen a similar question, which is, and <coughs> forgive me, I'm assuming this is so, did you get all the um, documents that came to us at the meeting on Thursday? Yes. One of which, which couldn't be shared before the meeting, was my participation in the exchange between the town administrator, Nancy Chavetta, and myself uh, with our initial conversation, which we could do legally, about what came in <coughs> from Hell to Trust lawyer, attorney, Englander. And were you copied with that? Uh, I don't think I was copied on that. Okay, so may I rapidly tell you what it is, very rapidly. Uh, you know, you know what would be I, great I is you if you to, actually yeah. kind of described it more than just said it, because yeah. I know I've gotten everything, but I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. You're, you're referring to Mr. Englander's email. Yeah, so he, he brought yeah, up so she, she She got that, yeah. yeah. Yes, and then what I... And you've read Nancy's response, and you've read Dan Hort's response, but not mine. Well, we've actually have read So yours. I basically agreed with our shellfish constable. Um, the motion at town meeting had us voting to appropriate money to buy everything in the Hilton property, except the two things that aren't in it anymore, because they are the two separate grants that have been sold, right? So it's everything. And one of the things that came from Attorney Englander, as a suggestion, right, it wasn't like this is a contingency in your purchase and sale agreement, was, oh, but can we hold these acres out? And <coughs> to quote our shellfish constable, what I said in my memo was, I completely agree that we cannot do that. Our hands are tied, because <coughs> the town meeting voted to do this, and the voters, you know, then, you know, seconded that at the election. The other two requests, um, say that we have to commit to making decisions about these acres, which we could do at our discretion, that basically cede the town's obligation under what the state confers on us as a responsibility for managing the shell fishery. It says, however, those two things that they asked for, no culching on the property. Well, there isn't that much room to culch, but there could be a little bit. And no new grants, right? And my, I really thought about this because it came up earlier. We can't, in my opinion, uh, defer our responsibility as managers of the shell fishing, you know, the shell yeah, fishery. Yeah. We shouldn't do that. It's our obligation under state law and state regulations. However, the thing about no new grants there is we said repeatedly leading up to town meeting, repeatedly in public meetings, in, you know, newspaper articles where we're quoted, you know, so on and so forth, that because pretty much all the area in that property, which can be farmed, which you know has been allowed by the state and licensed by the town, that's about it. The rest of it is productive and it's the wild fishery. And you can't put farms where the wild fishery is. We'll be lucky if we can even get some town you know, propagation acreage there because it's really all. So we can't, on one hand, I say we do not commit to saying, okay, no new grants, right? But at the same time, we have to remember that part of what was described about the property was that we weren't going to be really able to have new grants there, maybe a little extension here or there. But basically, we can't do a whole lot of new grants there because it's all productive and you can't use productive areas to have aquaculture. The thing about naming it for Robert Rowell, I found out more about him, and he was apparently a really good guy. And, you know, it's sort of cool because Burton Baker Beach, and then it could be Robert Rowell Beach. And he was an old guy who fished out there. He had acreage. And apparently he wasn't, he wasn't that old. He was younger than me. Really? If I've got the right, if I've got the right person. Well, all I know is 
No, he's deceased now, so maybe yeah, he was Yeah, I think he younger. died like at 57 or something. So uh, that's the reason I assumed that. Thank you. I didn't know yeah. he was younger. But what he did, the Probably, reason yeah. the reason they wish to have him, his memory preserved in this way is that when they were first going through the lawsuits, do you know this, you two? Yeah. You both know this. You, you can see he it for the public. He stepped but, yeah. up. He stepped up to the plate and said, look, your attorney said none of you should be a trustee at this point. And he said... I'm nobody in this. I'm not part of HELTA. I'd be willing to do that and take, you know, whatever risk there is. There was no risk. And so he was the trustee right initially when the trust was formed. And he was apparently liked and a good person. And, you know, that seems to me to be a nice thing to do. So I wouldn't have any objection to that myself. But about committing to allow, allowing, you know, saying no new grants, this is not a contingency that I would agree with, and I feel that they accepted our terms on April 22nd, and that's what we said at town meeting, and even if we could put these in there, because there was no mention of them in the motion, I would not like to do that because of our obligation under state law. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kathleen, yes. Um, so I, I read all, all the information, um, and I was really taken aback. Uh, my first uh, look at what came back from Ed Englander, the lawyer, and the trustees um, was this is a bait and switch. The town meeting voters um, approved this unanimously and that we were buying all of it. Not part of it, but all of it. Why would we leave out, you know, what they own so that they could, what, sell it for whatever they want to whoever they want later on? But the, the the second biggest thing that hits me over the head in this is that no culching, okay, so very little space out there to do culching, but there is some which would benefit the town, and two, no new grants. I mean, why are we buying it? Um, because socialism is not just for a selective group. It needs to be a needs to be for all. And my enthusiasm for the Hilta Trust from the very beginning um, has been about the benefit it would have for the town and the greater good. But they kind of have taken that off the table here. No. In some way. No. So when I want to ask a question, so are we taking this by eminent domain, friendly taking? Has that, that hasn't been determined, that hasn't but been I would determined. imagine yes. Okay. Um, so I agree with both, and I'll I'll be the rock in a hard place cut between two. You know, um, we want this to go through. We want it to go through easily because uh, it's already been pretty stressful and negotiating. Uh, they. I mean, I assume they had signed the purchase and sale that didn't have the contingencies, and now they're coming back with contingencies. Um, so it's a it's a really hard it's a hard decision because you know both are good. I actually want to say what um, I think that if we rename the beach, if they rename the beach, I don't know. I really feel like the whole town has to vote on it or they have to come before us and ask us or tell us a little more about the person they want to name it after. I mean, I really, I, I Googled him and it was all very nice, but I think that they're, I would, I would like, that's a big thing to me is naming a whole, not just a beach, but a whole section really of our town. So I don't know, where do we, where do, we go? Do we go back to uh, t telling the, uh, their lawyer that, you know, this was not voted on and like, what, what are our choices here? So I think from my discussions with their attorney, um, 
The additional lots to be excluded, I don't think that's a deal breaker for them. What's the that? additional lots? The additional lots to be excluded, I don't think that's a deal breaker for them. Me the one what? that they came to me and said, if we could get this one, that would be really important. And that was a part of a lot that they'd already so sold to Mr. LaPointe. Yeah. Um, now I can't remember what his first name was. Robert, yeah, yep. Bob, but yeah. they had already sold to him and accepted money, but they didn't register the deed. That was really the primary one that they were looking at. Past, if you look at the th seller's additional terms, I can easily go back to them and just say, um, the selectmen are not adverse to naming it Robert Roll Beach, but they would like to know a little bit more about it before they can commit to it but they wouldn't accept the other two. I really think this is more just a, I, I don't think there'll be an issue if whatever decision you make on this. If you say n no to all of it, I, I don't think that's an issue. If you want to say yes to one of them or two of them, I think that's really at your discretion. I, I, and at any point, if you feel that this is something that should be done in executive session, we can obviously, you know, post it for another meeting. But I, I, I really think it's just if you're not comfortable with these and you say no, I think we'll still be okay. Well, I, wait, I, I want to wait. No, uh, yes, you can in a second. So, with the naming of the beach, how do you guys feel? Do you think it should be a town ch like the town should have a yeah, say? Yeah, I agree in it? with you. Yeah. What do you think? No, about that? Uh, I mean, Fred Bell Way was named by the housing authority. Um, Burton yeah, Baker Beach was not named by the town. It was just in gratitude who, for... Well, who named it then? Well, it, it was... Uh, we could go back and look, but it's the point is... a long time ago. Yes, it's from a long time ago. Mayo Beach was named because there was an owner there. I need to say something important to Kathleen, though. Well, no, 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 no. I asked, I asked a question. I want to know okay, if, so if you feel the town I should I feel vote on that it or, or it's that. perfectly fine. Okay. I would like to give them this because... For them, it's an act of gratitude to someone who, you know, I've only heard about him from a couple of people, but it's also an act of gratitude on the town's part to say, you know, thank you for working with us on this. But I need to answer something Kathleen said. These are not contingencies, they were suggestions. Yeah. And they were brought up at the last minute and they don't come from. Well, wait. It they was weren't just brought up at the last minute. They were brought up after the purchase yes. and sale. Yes. That's that's. No, we haven't signed the purchase and sale. But they've seen it, haven't they? Seen no, our, it doesn't exist. Yes, they have. Yes, they've, they have. They've seen it. Yeah. Oh well, we haven't seen it because it's not done yet. Ah, you see. So the it two done. attorneys are working together on okay. the purchase so, and sale. So wait, so wait, wait. I want no, no, no. I want to clarify something because this is because you and I are confused on this. So with town meeting vote mm -hmm. they had not seen our proposal that did not include the contingencies that they wanted they agreed to what our offer was oh. these came as part of the purchase and sale and i really believe they are more in the way of suggestions than they are All we right. have to have this. okay, okay. So, right. so I, may I, Madam I, Chair, throw well, you Well, Helen really wanted need, to say something like or ask finish. you something. Yeah. So that's an important distinction. These are just like sort of final thoughts about this. Would we consider it? That's reasonable to bring up. They're not like do this or else. And I think the way for me to approach it, which I already said, is we presented this as no more new grants. As what? No more new grants okay. licensed by the town there because of it being productive. We said that repeatedly in all those meetings. So, but we cannot release our, you know, management of it. We can't defer to this kind of request because of our position, you know, under state law and regulations. And the best judgment of the Shellfish Department and the Select Board in using this beautiful, beautiful piece of intertidal property will be applied. We're not going to run riot there. And I think that that should be the way of saying no, not like you can't ask for that. But we also can't do it 
differently than town meeting understood it and the voters understood it. That's the main thing. So I just hope this works and I think the thing to do is to put it to them like that, not like no, no, yes, you know, or whatever. All right, so the three, the three uh, contingencies, additional terms, are that one, the buyer is excluded from allowing any new aquaculture grants, licenses, or beds on the land being sold with the exception of town beds, which will be limited to five acres. Uh, are we in agreement with that? No. No. For reasons okay. stated okay. by me. Uh, no, and then number two is no culching, and, and I will agree, right? So there's, okay, and we can vote on this. I just want to get a consensus. Uh, and then no culching will be allowed on the land being sold? I feel, again, we cannot defer to this request, but we'll certainly not do something irresponsibly. I'm saying no. Um, In other words, no. The way I understand it is that there isn't a lot of land, that nobody really cultures, right. but there's already just broken shells. Is there, like, intentional culching? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there is presently? There, uh, yeah, down on the Field, Field Point Blackfish Creek area. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because you have all of these grants from Indian Net. Right. With all those oysters. He's going to ask you to go to the microphone. Nancy, Sorry. Oh, I, <laughs> I just thought it okay, was Okay, so to recap quickly, um, we have culched down on the Blackfish Creek end of it. And uh, last year, and many, many times, in fact, it's on, our, it's on the um, current culching plan that we have in front of the state. And then there, um, the, the area right in front of Omaha, which is kind of where all the Indian Net Grants start, we do, we have done some culching in there uh, up to Lake Sewell's got Omaha. And it's a very good productive area there. And when you have all that strip of grants with oysters spawning and a southwest yeah. prevailing wind, I mean, you would want to catch that set with culch and continue to have that be a wild area. Now, are we gonna culch inshore of the grants where people drive? Probably not. No, that, there is um, shell fishing that takes place in there. There's people that have been regularly working it this year, but probably not gonna culch there because you have people driving and, and, and you have it as an, an access. Right. So we wouldn't ruin access. Um, that would be, you know, at cross purposes. Okay, so let me see if I, I, we, I have this. Uh, everybody sees the, additional, the seller's additional terms. So the three of us, and we'll vote on this, but just we agree that we uh, do not want to be excluded from allowing any new, cult, any new aquaculture grants or licenses or beds. Uh, no culching allowed. And I would agree with Helen that if it, you know, it would be nice if they n named it Robert Rao Beach, but I do want to have them or someone confirm a little more about this person and get even a little bit more. I don't know. I guess you can. I guess you don't need a town vote to do this, but um, yeah, I'd like to know a little bit more about him. Does that is that kind of good with everybody? Um, so, Janet, for the record, I'm saying no on all three suggestions. And all three. Yes. Okay. And um, I, yeah, I, how we're saying no, I think is very important yeah. in communicating this, Dan. You know, one, we can't do it because of town meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. I'm sorry about Mr. LaPointe, but. There's an integrity here to the voters at town meeting. Yeah. And I will not uh, jeopardize that. Yeah. I have a question uh, for uh, Nancy. So I Through just want to say, so we're, we're finished. We're, we're kind of agreeing, right? What I said, there's an yeah. agreement there. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. So, in other words, the shellfish department has been culching in the area, although not certainly between, you know, in the intertidal area on the inside of those grants for 
years? Yeah, and I don't know on? exactly. I don't know exactly the boundaries of <clears throat> and and where we were culching, um, but it seems close enough yeah. that I, it just doesn't make sense to me to say that no. we would not. Yeah, the thing is, not we can't cede our discretion about this, but also density issues. If you look at that, you know, drone video. The beautiful thing is the way in which the grants are strung out. There's not too much density there. There are no block grants. And that is a huge thing in terms of having it all work well, in terms of disease and nutrients and so forth. So we get that, or at least you know people who fish out there get that, is my understanding, and wanting to have much more going on there in terms of like, you know, stacked grants and stuff wouldn't, you know, serve the whole purpose of the area in a good way. The wild fishery wouldn't get, you know, the same uh, benefits. There are always problems with density. All right, so that's, yeah. Okay, so, Janet, so I? Uh, yes. I, I wouldn't be opposed. Um, through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Hort, if they want to um, honor Robert Rowell with a plaque out there, um, you know, w which we've, we, we, or bench, um, but uh, for the residents and, uh, you know, townsfolk that have known that as Burton Baker for the past hundred years, I'm, I'm reluctant to change the beach. Um, no, so not. I want to clarify something. Burton Baker's to the north. Yeah, it's not. It's and not it's not Burton Baker. It's Omaha Beach or Indian Neck. Okay. Yeah, it's it's not Burton Baker. Yeah. Which was this specific area that was, you know, it would be nice to know how that happened. Um, I actually read how it happened, and it was just named after him. But there's a reason. It's you know nothing dramatic. So I would go either way with naming it. I just feel like we need more input from the town and we need more, you know, if, yeah. I just, I feel funny naming a beach after someone that I have not heard anything more than a paragraph about and that the town would like it. But it, I'm not in favor of naming it, but if they feel strongly, then they could come before us. Okay. Or, or just, Let's ask around a little more. Yeah. I had a long, I, I heard a lot about him from someone, and I thought, okay, you know, I got yeah. it. I mean. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so see what they say. Yep. And let us know. Please. Sure will. Good. Get and the other two. find out the yep. two questions. How do they, how, how would do they like the money, and, you know. Yeah. And this the question has already been asked. But not answered. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, good. Wait, what did you ask? You know, the, the two things were, do they want a friendly taking? Oh, yeah. Can okay, we set that, that up? Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Go to bed. What time do you have to get up in the morning? Oh, it's only 930. Okay. Oh, God. Thank you for staying. Now what? Well, it's only 930. Personnel contracts. On the personnel, I'll wait until um, Michael gets back, but on the personnel con uh, contracts, all, all I'm asking you to do is the communications union, and at your next meeting, you'll do all of the individual personnel contracts. Okay. Where is it? It's item K. Is this you? It's something you've already approved in executive session, but it should also be approved during a public session, so. But where is it? Mm, here, you can look at mine. So you're just looking for a motion, Dan? No, yes. I'm looking for the contract. I've collected it. Um, there's, there's this one here, too, but this is the one that he's talking about um, doing it next week, right? Jay, you're talking about doing next, next meeting? The uh, personnel contracts and MOU approvals with yes. the communications union? All, all I'm asking for is to do the communications union tonight and then the rest of them will come at your next meeting. Okay. Okay, I can make a motion. Go ahead, please. I move to approve the contract for the communications. Is it a union? Just yes. Two. Union. Second. All in favor? I did read it. 
Yeah, not you did. I'm sure you did somewhere sometime. Good. <laughs> um, and am I missing anything? Nope, that's it. No, it's now we have it's to do. It's only 9.30. No, we now have we do, to do. Uh, yes, I know. Um, uh, select board reports. Are there any select board reports? Um, no. Good. So then we move on to town administrator's report. And I have to say, ask, what is the complaint about the use of Senior Center for Sea Babies program? Mm -hmm. The person who came in to speak about it feels that a senior center should be used for seniors and not for child care. That's kind of what I figured they'd say. Okay, I'm so sure you handled it brilliantly. Is the meeting on the 22nd the same resident? Uh, yes. <clears throat> yeah. So there were, um, and I, I, you know, um, communicated with the town administrator in the town administrator's report um, and how any of us can keep any of this straight, I don't know. The, on May 9th, um, the chair and the, you know, I, this was all on, you know, discussed in the last meeting we had, the work meeting. On May 9th, the chair and the town administrator and the commissioner from the DCR and somebody called Eric who manages for the DCR, the Nickerson State Park thing. Uh, met and then there was a meeting ostensibly for a butters here on May 13th with it turned out actually seven people from the DCR or the DOT and whoever showed up it wasn't a open meeting it was minimally outreached people were minimally outreached. so is this under town administrators report yeah so it's just two dates that aren't in there and uh, this is not to fault the town administrator. Was he at them? He was, but okay. he was um, at the one with you, and then he was, as I was, only at not entirely all of the one with the DCR and the DOT. And I'm doing this mainly so because... So DCR and DOT is on, is on here? No, it's not. But it, it refers to a meeting with the DCR and the DOT on a date and the reason I'm doing this is that the town administrator was good enough to show up at both of them, mm -hmm. right? And that's why I'm wanting to document it with dates. I'm not faulting you, okay? And you can help me. The, the DCR DOT meeting was in this room with, and they called for the meeting with people that they knew to be a butters. Is Some of them. What th Other people showed up, I think. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is what they did, not what happened. Right, okay, yes. Um, any other, uh, so just for the audience, I would say that um, many senior centers, and it was always kind of a, <coughs> a, a community move to include younger children with older children, <laughs> and that see babies is separate. They might run around, but I know that the people have it's been an ongoing discussion, but I know that the town, most of the people in the town like the Sea Babies program there. So, um, anything else about the town administrator's report? Topics for future discussion. Kathleen? Uh, Dan, I saw the um, uh, letter or uh, recommendation from Mark Vincent with regard to uh, recycling at the beaches. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm asking perhaps we can uh, direct the DPW to create signage, I mean signage, big signs that say carry in, carry out. That's their intent, so yeah. I will reinforce it with them. And um, next, what has become of our personnel board? Are they defunct or are they, do they have a board? Is it? To my knowledge, they met, you know, approximately a year ago when they were considering a water resources director position. They have not met since, and I'm, I, I don't think they've met since, and I don't n know one person, um, Sylvia Smith resigned from the board, uh, so there should be four people yet on the board, but they haven't met since about a year ago. Through you? Yeah. Yes, Helen. So, um, yeah, they've still got a quorum. 
you know, they can get a quorum. They only meet for very specific things, but they're doing this on this beautiful foundation of a huge amount of work that was done to redo the personal board like handbook, the thing that was done when Debbie Freeman was on there. So they're kind of up to speed, but they're one group that doesn't have to kick in very much. That's, you know, that's the thing about it. Um, my memory is that they're not, um, they're not um, mediators in situations with personnel. Is that correct, Dan? That is correct, but I think if I look up their charge, and I can't get it up fast enough on my phone here, but I think their charge is to review maybe policies once a year, something like that, yeah. which the, they haven't really taken on that role. Yeah. Well, should we just ask them, which we are, it's appropriate for us to do that, is to maybe, would they please do that, because they're supposed to do that if they don't mind. Yeah, or maybe we can suggest having a meeting with them and, you know, meeting them and seeing where they're at, um, you know. Um, yeah. And even suggesting that they, they meet at least once a year just to stay in touch and keep up on things. But it might be nice to have them come into the yeah. select board and give us a report or, you know, yeah, whatever. Tell them what they, if, ask if they need something or need some more S support, people. Support, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, is this future discussions? Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, there are two things, and one of them sort of tips into correspondence, as it often does. So um, the ongoing case about the big house on Ch at the end of Chiquessa Neck Road that's falling into the yep. uh, thing, there's yet another set of, as I said, or, you know, at the beginning, uh, requests for public comments, and we, we. Um, we got email from uh, the yep. MEPA and stuff today, and I talked, I checked in with Hillary, and I said, well, should we also be sending a letter about this? Because remember, we sent a letter mm -hmm. to the DEP, and she said, yeah. So here's the thing. The, the, a letter that we sent before can be sent identical, except there's one day that can be put in there that I didn't have exactly last time. So it's December 5th, in fact, right? So okay. I would change the one date. The other thing is mention of something which wasn't known before we sent that letter, which is that the town right next to that property, like right next to it, oh, I know. got rid of all this riprap right. because of the scouring. And if you would permit me, I would add two sentences about that because our next meeting is on June 11th and that letter of comment has to be submitted before June 11th. So if you would permit me to do that, I can you know, copy you with it, but we won't have time to approve it. I will not put anything else in there. So Janet, through you to Helen, is that MEPA's coming down to that site June 11th at 1 p.m.? Yeah. June 4th. June is 4th. it June 4th? Is it June 4th? All right. So that's next week. Yeah. And um, and the comment period's over the 11th? It's over prior to the 11th. So why don't you write the letter or amend the letter, get it to Courtney, and we all come in individually, and if we agree with it, we sign it. No, because we can't deliberate like that outside of a meeting. Signing a letter that doesn't have changes to it, it's deliberating? Well, it's making a decision and expressing opinion about something, but I, I would be comfortable with doing it. Um, but I'm not sure it's exactly well, kosher. we're not deliberating. Why don't you get it printed out five copies and everybody can come sign their own copy? Yeah. And then somebody can, yeah. If that would be all right with Oh, Courtney. Dan, have a thought about and, this, please. Um, huh? And Mike can catch up with Dan, even though you probably already caught up. I don't know what, I don't know about this. What the heck we're talking about. I, I, can, I just, I, well, no, I mean, the, the letter, it's, it's fine. Okay. It's okay. fine. Yeah. Just, <laughs> right. I'm over, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll figure it out. We could just have it from the Wealthy Select Board without signatures. Yeah. So their site, I'm sorry, their site visit is June 4th 
at 1 p.m. Yeah. That's a, um, oh, it's a site visit. Okay. And comments on the project will be welcome in writing prior to June 11th, 2019. And is that to uh, the ZBA or the Board of Health or it's MIFA? To MIFA. It's to MIFA. MIFA. And Hillary was yeah. very, I said to her, okay. is this different than the DP? She said, yeah, you should send something in. And that they're meeting J June 11th, they're, they're, the hearing is June 11th? No, your, your comments Are to due. them should be received prior to June 11th. And I sent that to everybody earlier today, yeah. so you may not have seen it yet. So the other thing is, um, uh, there's that, and then at the next meeting, can we please discuss what we're going to do for the July 4th parade? Yeah. Just to have it on the next agenda. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. <coughs> um, I What did I want to say? Oh, for future discussion, we really need to discuss. There's a lot of people in town uh, questioning <coughs> the use of town-owned property without any compensation to the town. And um, I don't know how we want to handle that, whether we, yeah, it needs to be put on a, the board of selectmen, select board's agenda. Okay. okay. Mike? Can we find out if there's any policies about the use of town po property where it's uncompensated? Do we know? Uh, yeah. Is there a policy that if you're using town property, you must compensate the town yes there is a policy um, I thought the That's working right. meeting was amazing and I wanted to suggest to, to your point about the use of town property could we have a stand would people like to have a standing um, monthly meeting and then when this issues like this would be perfect for so you're saying that just every month every Every, third, fourth every third Thursday, Thursday we, yeah. have a, we have a meeting or something to that effect. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. So um, and then we, we just announce at our meeting here what the uh, content will be. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, um, Madam Chair. Yes. So be careful what you wish for, for Helen. I, I wanted <laughs> working with uh, meetings for years, and now we have them. However, I have to say, and I was going to bring this up next warrant season, that we don't have them during warrant season. Because keeping up with the minutes and just having that many minutes, uh, meetings during that time, I go to a lot of meetings besides select board meetings, town related. Not have them when, Helen? During warrant season. Oh, sure. That's you know, a good when idea. We're birthing, we're birthing yeah. the, yeah. yeah. That, we can decide yeah. it has a seasonality to it, but I just thought I wanted to build on the momentum of yeah. the excellent one we had last time and yes. just suggest we make them a once a month thing. Although yes, I but, would oh, say to hold on I that, I uh, yeah, I know, but this is a future discussion anyhow. Yep. Uh, we would also then, if we set a time, it, we would have to accommodate um, our shellfisher person so that we, we may not want to set a time. We may so want to just keep it as we're going. I would like to do it as needed, but that we do need it frequently. Yeah. The yeah. other thing is, that. if we have it, it gets videoed. Because we said a lot of important... Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the last one wasn't, and the reason I'm saying that is... It's recorded. Yeah, it was recorded, but for example, Kathleen, you know, you couldn't be there. So if it's videoed, First of all, we talked about a lot of important stuff, and we did it clearly. And Hillary's presentation at that was very good. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, it's recorded, and Kathleen could listen to it, but, or other people could listen to it, but it's not the same as a video. So, I don't know. There's so uh, many I, things videoed now. People will stop watching them all. Finance well, is videoed. This is videoed. And I know we're endlessly fascinating, <laughs> but, you know, that people have a lot of demands on their time. And the whole purpose of doing a working meeting that's not, I'd rather have topics that lend themselves to video come to the regular select board and topics that are more of a papers and informal with Dan at the table and we're getting work done not be videoed because it's the informality of it is important. So I'll I don't. also just add that um, we need we need the camera if we're doing video we've got to have the meeting here so that right. means we've got to go is this on are these on yeah, yeah. So that means we've got to go according to the council on aging schedule no, 
no, no, no. I've been in all these tiny little meetings, like shellfish committee meetings. Oh, and they stuff. do have a smaller camera. Yeah, here's okay, the other. Okay, no, I'm not done. Sorry. So the other thing is that you also have to have someone available. You have to have someone available, mm -hmm. and it costs money. So it's a consideration about videotaping, but that's a discussion for another time because this is just future yeah. discussions. Okay. Janet. All right, Mike had his hand up. I was just saying that I agree with Justina. That's what did she say? <laughs> that's that uh, it it's not be. necessary it's not to necessary. record everything yeah. on that was video and when we're doing these working meetings it's, they're, it's they're more casual yep uh, Kathleen so Janet um, just to clarify uh, madam chair through you to mr. Hort her request was that a lot of people are using town property and we do have a select board policy on it um, are we asking that that be an agenda item yes I have it on my list to put it on the next because we went from agenda. that to too many meetings and I'm really confused now yeah. so yeah that's yeah. on it's on the is this on my Tom okay yeah. okay thank yeah. you um, okay any other future discussions let's move on to correspondence and vacancy reports I think we're doing pretty well getting people on um, on committees oh, any yeah. correspondence well I brought up the one thing yeah what did we decide to do on the one thing? What was the one thing? The MEPA letter. You're going to do gonna all the work, it, and, and we're going to send it. And you're going to leave it in the selectman's office. Well, I'm going to write it and send it to Courtney. Okay. And she can put it in the okay. select board office. Okay. Um, and um, can we do the minutes? Yes. So, this is really exciting. Be me. Before you go forward with the minutes, um, on correspondence and vacancy report, I had somebody who, actually our principal clerk, Jean, pointed it out to me today, is that the composition of the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Planning Committee um, was set in 2010, and it was two people from the Board of Health, two people from the Board of Selectmen, one at large, and I think there were a couple more, and we've kind of gotten completely away for that, away from that. Two so I'm going to bring it forward to you at your next meeting because you do have somebody who's requesting appointment to that. So that Great. so that's something that could be on future discussion too. Is people somehow I want to announce or have procedure or protocol for anybody wanting to be on a committee? that they know that they should start going to committees and really getting an idea of what the committees are about and who's on them. And that should be written, that should be procedure. That'd be a great and thing for a working meeting. Yes, yeah. and we also need um, a recommendation from every committee when somebody is applying. So we had these, these um, committee appointments tonight and I have no idea if the committee has seen them, known them, need them. Sometimes, sometimes a committee will email one of us, you are saying, we really want this person because they know how to do right. computers. Right. So that, that, there's got to be some, a better policy that we could work on for people applying for committees. Okay. Um, yep. Back to I exciting agree. minutes. Minutes. I move that we approve the minutes of March 26, 2019 as amended. Second. All in favor? Thank you. I move that we approve the minutes of May 14, 2019 as amended. Second. All in favor? Are we up to date? Yes. No. Well, we still have, we do have another one. The work, yeah. the work session and also when we get into our next executive session, the executive session minutes. And um, just for Mike to re remember, executive session, there are two ways you vote on it. One is you can approve the minutes, but approving to release them is another matter. Mm -hmm. So we should approve them sooner rather than later so we can all remember, you know, what the hell went on. But you can't always release them. Sure. Because I haven't been in an executive session, yeah. so I can't approve anything. Right. Oh yes, you can approve anything, but you can you can because guess what? This is weird. We should adjourn. We should adjourn. This is not. Yeah, I'll tell you. May I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. All in favor? I'll do this last. 
I think we're all in favor. I want to make sure I shut my lights on. I'm going to raise your hand to adjourn, Justin. Apparently.